Okay, guys, we are live. Uh, so for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your friendly, uh, I think I'll be your friendly venture captain, because today we are kicking off a brand new campaign on the channel, playing um, the Warhammer 40,000 RPG Rogue Trader, originally published by uh, Fantasy Flight Games. Um, and we just got word a few weeks ago that there will be a new kind of a new version of this game and, and its sister games uh, coming out by way of Cubicle 7. So it'll be inter interesting to see how much of a crossover there is between the two. But um, we're, we're, one of the benefits of uh, this particular game, it is not in print right now, at least not in physical form, but you can buy copies of all of the PDFs for all the source books through Drive Through RPG. And we've got a link to that down below if you are interested. Um, yeah, Cubicle 7 is terrific for keeping these things in all the PDFs available. Uh, still, I really appreciate that. They're not like phasing out one game just in favor of uh, you know trying to force a new one down our uh, throats, as it were. Not that, I mean, Wrath and Glory, I'm sure, is a great game. I just, I like this one. Mm -hmm. um, with me today are the future stars of our ongoing campaign. And I guess I will say as well, uh, this campaign will be playing through, the intention is to play through all three chapters of the Warp Storm trilogy, starting with book one, The Frozen Reaches. Uh, now, all of us... Uh, are new not only to the system, uh, but also it's been a very, very long time since I've been fairly deep into Warhammer 40k. Uh, so uh, we are going to be warming up with some, a, um, uh, a shorter adventure, and we might do another short adventure after that before we dive into this, just to get some XP for the characters, as well as some experience for the players. There's a lot of moving parts in this game that we'll learn about as we go. Um, but one thing I'll say before I introduce our, the stars of the Frozen, Re uh, of the, uh, Frozen Reaches um, campaign uh, is that while many of us are fans of 40k, we are not you know, going to hold ourselves behold, uh, or at least married to the uh, the canon. We are inevitably, because of how deep and rich the setting is, we are inevitably going to fuck things up, by which I mean I am going to. So if I do make errors about certain things, I'm going to try my best to make sure I'm presenting an accurate picture of uh, the world as described in the source books and in the whatever else. But, um, you know, there are inevitably going to be gaps through which I am likely to trip. So when I do make those mistakes, I would ask that you to kindly forgive us on those errors. So with that in mind, uh, let me introduce you to the stars, the people who will be playing in today's uh, or in their art, this campaign and will be generating their explorers today. Uh, I'll go the order. I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are and what is your experience with Warhammer 40k, whether it's, you know, video games or board games or books or, you know, uh, RPGs. First up, we've got Jeffrey. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Jeff. And to be honest, my knowledge of Warhammer 40K is almost zero. I've never really played any of it or been into it. It's always interested in me, but it's like you said, it's a huge franchise with like so much stuff like books, games, miniatures. And I'm into enough other things that I just never had the time to commit to get into it. Nice. So, I mean, cool. So, if you're coming into this uh, game with a very, yeah, with a, I mean, a blank slate perspective, that's terrific. Uh, so, um, Sean, I believe you have, our next up is Sean, who has yeah. somewhat more the other end of the RPG <laughs> experience yeah, with 40 k It has been uh, years for the most part. Uh, our our one session of, um, of a Death Watch aside, mm. um, it's been years, but yeah, I ran uh, Dark Heresy for three years, um, and it was uh, it was great. So, uh, yeah, great great setting, and um, had such a good time. And I'm particularly jazzed about uh, yeah, Cubicle Seven's project. You know, it sounds right down the pipe. Mm -hmm. um, like what? Like <laughs> you know, they did what you you know didn't think they would, but they did. You're like, oh my goodness, you know. But yeah, so so super psyched. And I've never, but I've but I've never played Rogue Trader. So nice. uh, excited. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and last but certainly not least is James. Hey, hello. So I'm James. And me, um, I've done a bit on the PC with things like Dawn of War and uh, mm. Space Marine. And I've got the, uh, although I've not used it enough, the Starship One, uh, Battles, Battlefleet Gothic Armada mm. 2. Mm. But. Uh, yeah, on the uh, and then read books like uh, the Uriel Ventress series and um, Ravenor and Eisenhorn. So, 
I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, the the books are great. I found the books mm-hmm. changed everything, mm-hmm. uh, brought it all to life and made it a little bit more t- uh, three dimensional than uh, the the board game might make you think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, mm-hmm. anyway, that's it. Uh, nice. In terms of role playing games on it, nada. Nice. So. Okay. So well, that's excellent. Uh, the uh, so for myself, um, I started with the original Rogue Trader. Uh, I got the original Rogue Trader book at a gaming convention, and then we, which had uh, in the back, you could cut out these paper things, and you would you were supposed to like tape them to um, pennies or stuff like that, so you could put them down. You had orcs and you had uh, uh, Space Marines. Uh, we played that. Uh, a fair amount. We um, we never got into the miniatures because we were you know <laughs> we were working class kids, so we couldn't afford that shit. And we had a lot of other gaming stuff we had to buy. But the book I read to the point where it fell apart, so it got traded in in one of my like purgings because the books had all fallen apart. And then I sort of fell out of uh, uh, 40k uh, for quite some time. I bought I picked up one of the box sets, which I think was like fourth edition of the 40k um, game. Uh, but never got a chance to play it again. I've sort of have been peripheral to the art, to the setting for a while. When I was a kid, I like I loved uh, White Dwarf, and, you know, and I would cut them out. So I had like the squ- um, to to date myself for this. Uh, the White Dwarfs that came out when I was really into it were like the one on the squats that introduced the Exo armor and the um, the original uh, squat uh, lists, the Imperial Guard one. Um, and then we sort of got off to other stuff, but I really, I never got away. I always had that original Rogue Trader thing in my mind. And then you fast forward to later and uh, when I did have more disposable income and discovered that uh, Cubicle 7 or uh, Fantasy Flight Games was putting out a series of games, uh, role-playing games based on this, um, there was a previous effort at creating kind of like a skirmish level quasi role-playing game uh, by, uh, I don't think it was, I think it was Sabretooth Games. It wasn't um, uh, war, uh, Games Workshop. It was a different subsidiary. Uh, but the first the first time they put out this proper full-on RPG was, was Dark Heresy. And what uh, Fantasy Flight did, similar to what they would later do with their Star Wars games, is separate out different games for sort of different parts uh, or different stories you'd want to tell. Mm-hmm. So with their games, they did Dark Heresy first edition. Uh, then they did, I think, Rogue Trader was the second. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it was uh, Death Watch, which you're playing mm-hmm. as Space Marines. Uh, then it was, um, I think Black Crusade was next, and then Only War was the final one. And yeah. each of those, and then they also released a Dark Heresy 2nd Edition, which sort of reworked some of the rules, which had been tinkered with along the way. All five of those games had the same kind of core gameplay stuff in it that was very similar to uh, Warhammer Fantasy 1st Edition and 2nd Edition. But in the course of the publication, 2nd Edition, the license was lost to... Uh, um, by um, Green Ronin, who had been uh, publishing the um, uh, the game, uh, the second edition of the Warhammer Fantasy game, and then the uh, Cubicle or uh, Fantasy Flight put out a very different uh, type of game with Warhammer Fantasy Third Edition, and uh, then the license ran out. You know, after uh, they finished publishing all that stuff, um, and all the games had kind of reached the run to their end, they lost a license, and then. More recently, uh, originally it was, um, was it Ulysses Spiele? Is that what it's called? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. They had the uh, the license to develop a new Warhammer Fantasy or Warhammer 40K game that became Wrath and Glory. They lost the license for whatever reason. And then Cubicle 7, who was publishing the fourth edition of Warhammer Fantasy RPG and the Soulbound game, they got the license and did, did an updated version of uh, Wrath and Glory, which is a very different game from this one, which is um, a D20, D100 base game. And then they recently announced that, uh, I think at, uh, what was it, at Gen Con, that they're doing effectively like a re- revamped version of the D100 versions of these Warhammer games, which is uh, going to be a little more nitty gritty and a little less, uh, you know, high action cinematic the way that Wrath and Glory is. So. Mm-hmm. That's where we find ourselves. Now, the the thing with the five different um, RPGs that were released for Warhammer 40K, one of the nice things is is they you can see the entire product line. It seems like each of those games released all of the books they wanted to. Like they, you can cover everything you would conceivably want for a Rogue Trader game or a you know only War game or whatnot. Those are out in the form of the supplements. 
Um, mm -hmm. It's sort of similar to how the, uh, honestly, the Star Wars books are right now. Like the Star Wars line had a similar thing where they had a, it seems like they had a plan of exactly what they wanted to cover. And then at the end of it, they were done. Same thing with this stuff. Um, there are about 18 books out for Rogue Trader. We are gonna be making use of, to start with just the content from the core rule book. The adventure we'll be playing, will be making use of some stuff from the like uh, companion book called Into the Storm. Uh, but we're gonna cross that bridge once we get to it. <clears throat> Uh, so there are a ton of expansions for this, like extra rules on psychers, extra rules on warships, extra rules on uh, different kinds of characters, and uh, a handful of different uh, adventures as well. There's about eight adventures, I think, for it. Um, but um, yeah, it's it, what the reason I mentioned that is just because it's cool that we're, we're going to have anything you could conceivably want in a Rogue Trader game is there. And then we can also draw on content from the other games as well. They are compatible, but they are at different power levels. Rogue Trader is near the top of the power level of the characters. It's about, well, it's about the midpoint of the five, because you've got top of the, uh, the scale is probably Death Watch, and then shortly beneath that is, is Black Crusade, where you play Chaos Marines. Midpoint is the characters you're playing in Rogue Trader, then it is the uh, Inquisitors, and then it is the Grunts, who are you're playing in Only War, who die by the score. Um, so, um, that's the the kind of the, the history of the of the game. I fell pretty hard into these uh, Cubicle Seven one or the Fantasy Flight ones, and I have complete sets of all of them except for Black Crusade because I don't really care for that game all that much. I've got the bare minimums for that, and that's it. Also, the price of those last three books are just fucking astronomical right now. So uh, I, that's, I, I'm not getting to that. But uh, for the core rulebook, I will say you can get uh, the core rulebook in print for about 60 bucks US uh, through, um, if, if, uh, through other sources as well, but through uh, Noble Knight Games as well. We've got a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight. You can get a copy through them as well. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I love these games. I think these are very, very well done games. They have a really nice um, middle ground of crunch and, um, you know, so you got lots of cool detail about your character, but not overwhelmed with it. The play at the uh, table that we've had in that one session we played with uh, Sean, uh, if that's anything to judge by, was very, very quick. You know, um, mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. that there's a narrative meta currency in the game that re refreshes at the start of each day. So you guys aren't, you know, uh, burdened by the vagaries of the dice roll all the time. And I think the Rogue Trader one, because of the types of characters you'll be playing, this will be a unique uh, role-playing experience too. There's few games where you get a chance to, you know, command a ship of 50 to 80,000 people and potentially a f uh, flotilla of that many, you know, ships uh, going on. So the scale of play, I think, will be much closer to like, honestly, similar to like a Game of Thrones at the, you know, uh, noble level than it is going to be at the ground level. But one of the things that you mentioned, James, I think is do that uh, in particular, the um, Eisenhorn novels do a good job of is show that at the end of the day, it's still people, right? Like the, the Imperium where this is set, uh, the dark future of the uh, 41st millennium uh, is, um, it is recognizable um, in many ways. People are still people in, you know, and driven by the same base emotions uh, that they are by superstitions, by greed, by whatever, faith, belief, um, as they are in, in our world. Uh, there have been, to give Jeff for your benefit, um, up to about uh, 20,000 years ago, the, the, the game is called Warhammer 40K because it's in the common era of the 40, you know, 41st millennium. Um, things were looking pretty good. And you, if you were to compare the uh, galaxy around 20,000 years ago, to what it is, uh, to what you would see in other sort of generic sci-fi settings, you would find a lot in common. Um, you would find humanity spreading out across the galaxy. Uh, you would find them encountering, uh, you know, um, alien life and whatnot, and conquering, um, you know, kind of the galaxy with their technological prowess and with the assistance of um, what we think are, are probably AI and uh, AI driven robots. Uh, one of the key technologies they used in order to do this was this thing called an STC, a standard template construct. Basically think of it like a, like a nanotech kind of magic box that creates anything from anything. 
uh, these were used to drive things out and people became reliant on the same kind of, not only the, the fabrication that uh, was created with the SDCs, but also the ability to build and, and, and terraform worlds as they're going out. About 20,000 years ago is when things kind of went to shit. And um, there was a, uh, one of the problems that happened was a kind of like a Dune style robot insurrection. Uh, humankind fought a, a near, you know, g uh, genocidal war against what they call the men of iron. And we're, it's not quite clear what that is. Um, and they sort of segued into a time of darkness. And I, I think that's around the time when the, uh, the warp storm, when the Eldar kind of were snuffed out and the warps became a problem and traveling and whatnot across the galaxy became a bit of a, um, a challenge. Uh, there also during that time was the beginning, uh, the emergence of uh, more prominent uh, psychic, uh, psychic power suddenly started manifesting amongst uh, humankind. And uh, that became a real thing. Um, what they did not realize at the time was that psychic powers weren't just an independent, separate part of your body. They actually were tapping into this other dimension that has been come to be known as the warp. And there are awful, horrific creatures in there that are either, you know, ancient antediluvian kind of like de demon type things or manifestations of the collective emotions and whatnot of different species. Whatever the case is, after the Dark Age came, people started finding that psychers were being possessed by these creatures from the warp and, and using psychers as a gateway to get in. Mm. Um, about 25,000 years ago, or is it 25? No, it was about 20, uh, 10,000 years ago is when the Great Crusade kind of happens. And that's where this uh, mysterious figure who had a phenomenal power, uh, psychic power and uh, great genius and great vision for humanity, the God Emperor of Mankind, emerged, solidified a single you know, government on what was it, like an apocalypse earth. And then he set out this great crusade led by, or a, a, with a spearhead of these genetically engineered uh, or genetically altered troops called Space Marines. They go out and start conquering the entire galaxy, bringing the rule of the emperor out there. And the emperor at the time has a specific vision in mind for what he wants to do. One of the things he wants to do is uh, eliminate superstition and eliminate belief in gods. Uh, the emperor at the time of the Great Crusade is vehemently anti-religious. There's a great short story about the called The Last Church, where he goes up and there's a big conversation between him and this last like holdout on earth. And um, unfortunately, things kind of went to shit. Uh, when he was on the cusp of, of sort of completing the, the conquest, he left one of his um, like genetically engineered super soldiers in charge of the mission, and he went back to go work on something else. A bunch of shenanigans ensue, which can be read about in the series of Horus Heresy novels. And um, the warp, corrupted and chaos, the, the creatures that live in the warp, corrupted first one and then another and then half of the heads of the Space Marines legions, and then they tried to invade Earth and destroy the Emperor. The Emperor persevered, but suffered such horrific injuries that he is only kept alive right now, if that can be said what he is is uh, by him being enshrined in this massive piece of machinery called the Golden Throne that requires the life essence of hundreds, if not thousands of psychics on a daily basis in order to keep him moving. One of the things that emerges afterwards, um, something that started beforehand uh, was, well, two things that started beforehand that become really prominent parts of the setting. One of them is the Ministorium, the sort of the apparatus that comes up and builds up around running the empire. So there's the big military presence of the Space Marines and the other related military chapters. And there is the Ministorium, the, the group, the sort of government that runs the Imperium. Uh, the other thing is, is the faith in the emperor um, as a sort of tragic turn of events where he had tried to eliminate the superstition and belief and bring the galaxy into an enlightened post-religious world. Now, 10,000 years after the Horus Heresy, the galaxy sees uh, armies of the Imperium going out and raising entire uh, planets 
for heresy against the God Emperor. Um, the world of 40k is a, it's called a grimdark setting, but it is grimdark in the sense of that, like, um, black or gallows humor of, uh, uh, that the British so are so known for. Uh, not to talk about you when you're not here, <laughs> James. Uh, but it's, it, that's very much part of the setting. Like, it's, it, it is grimdark to the point of almost parody. Uh, and it's not funny, like it's not necessarily things aren't played for laughs, but like it's almost a satire of it. And the way that I'm uh, electing to uh, approach this is from that perspective. You know, like we're, um, the God, Emp the Imperium is an absolutely fucking awful place to live. It is a terrible government to live under. Uh, it is r unbelievably unfair. It is co colossally corrupt. It is, you know, blindingly misguided in its religious efforts. Um, but in spite of all that awful shit, there's still heroics that can happen and there's still interesting and fun opportunities that we can see. And similar to, you know, um, James and Sean, we've talked about the playing in a game where there is a Kota Bushido. In the same way, there's not, the way that um, uh, the inhabitants of this world and your characters will interact with the rest of the world is not necessarily in that art, that stereotype, like all Xenos, all aliens must die and blah, blah, blah. Like you will find one of your supporting characters that you're gonna have on your ship is a Xenos, is a, t a Tau uh, Pathfinder. Uh, so, your characters can feel free to be more enlightened than the dogmatic, you know, uh, folks that you're going to deal with, uh, at least the ones who are part of the Imperium. The setting for our uh, particular uh, campaign is a part of space called the Coronis Expanse. And this has sort of been in a lost sector. It's been part of uh, the world that, or part of the galaxy that has been sort of forgotten at some point, whether that was during the Horus Heresy or during the Dark Age or whatnot. Um, so you will be, you know, there will be lots of opportunities to uh, find, you know, lost human colonies from 20,000 years ago or uh, Xenos, uh, you know, uh, civilizations that have never been encountered before or threats that you've never, you know, that are new and uh, maybe threatening, threatening not only yourself, uh, but the uh, wider Imperium. Um, you will also find that there are much older races that have been out here for longer. Uh, the, the humanity is really uh, only in comparison to another race called the Tau can the humans be s said to be anything close to an adult, you know, uh, a species. They are very much newcomers to the galaxy and there are races who have been out here for much, 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 much longer that you may encounter over the course of our campaign. Those include the Eldar and some other more secretive things. The tech level, Jeff, is kind of like 80s sci-fi. It's got, although those STCs were part of the spread out, since that time, unfortunately, the uh, understanding of technology has also been shrouded in religious dogma by a group called the Adeptus Mechanicus. Uh, they are, originally, they were a separate, um, like, cult uh, that grew up on Mars during the Dark Age of, of uh, Mankind. And uh, when they they were in an alliance with uh, the uh, emperor, when they he spread out into the galaxy, but they they have their own sort of belief in like spirits and whatnot being in the different things. So you're not talking to a computer program. You're talking to I can't remember what they call it. It's a spirit of some kind. Um, the other oh, thing yeah. uh, is that machine um, spirit. It's which the machine spirit. The machine spirit. Yeah. Machine spirit, yeah, good call. The other thing is that there are not, while there are not humans, there are things, or not robots, there are things called servitors that sort of stand in for that, which are basically the corpses of, or the living bodies of convicts or heretics or whatnot that have basically been converted over to being biological things. That can be like a full bodied human, or it can be floating heads, or it could be, you know, there's all sorts of, of things that, that uh, you use. So, um, while there aren't, um, you're going to find that there are some ways where it does feel like kind of a, a, a fairly primitive uh, technology, uh, or at least it's not 
uh, knowledge and advancement of technology and like coming up with a gadget to solve a situation is really not the kind of thing that happens in this setting. A lot of the touchstones of 80s sci-fi are here. You know, there's big spaceships that get you between systems. There's small ships that you use as shuttles to land on planets. There's not teleporters, but there are psychics who can do that kind of stuff. Uh, oh, and no, there are teleporters. There are teleporters. There's, there's high-tech stuff that you may not uh, start with. Um, yeah, that, and as far as the characters for this campaign, you'll be playing the crew of a rogue trader vessel. Um, you are going to be the senior officers, as it were, that will be running a uh, an endeavor. You have a, I think it's called a, um, a warrant of trade. And what you, what this allows you to do is uh, to basically uh, anything we want yes <laughs> it allows you to basically run an independent operation and if you think of kind of some of the tasks that say like the crew of the firefly get in, get involved with but then expand them out to the scale of star wars star wars doesn't you know kill a village it blows up a planet and in a similar way, you don't like get involved with sh smuggling one thing from one planet to another planet. You will set up a trade network between two things, or you might set up a colony, or you might get, you know, so provide military support because of your, you know, two and a half mile long vessel will help push off some kind of Xenos threat or chaos threat or whatever. Um, the whole game is, is going to be the stories that happen as you guys go out and try and make some cash. You know, uh, for your, but again, think Star Wars in scale, not like Traveler or Firefly or something like that in scale. We are talking about um, your adventures will deal with the, the fate of billions in some cases, not just, you know, dealing with uh, saving a village or saving a city or something like that. So that's the broad landscape. Uh, Sean and James, do you guys have anything to add to the setting that you think James or that uh, Jeff might want to bear in mind? I guess I mean, it's humanocentric. Uh, yeah. Notwithstanding the Tau character you're going to have on the crew, um, it is a very xenophobic setting. But the benefit of playing a rogue trader on the fringes of space is you get to get away with a lot of stuff. Yeah, because the rogue traders are specifically exempt from the usual rules of where you'd have to kill all the xenos. Yeah. But you, you, <laughs> you know you're allowed trade to with. for profit for the Imperium. Yeah. As long as Definitely. we're... Um, outside normal normal um I, if I, I can't quite remember how it's defined but um as long as we're in the outer reaches you know as long as we're not in the imperium pr uh precisely i, I believe i believe the writ mm -hmm. is for out because we're supposed to be exploring and bringing to the emperor so it lets us do whatever the hell we want out there but if we come back we're at least technically supposed to be i think under the same rules <laughs> okay. so yeah yeah <laughs> Um, yep. The uh, setting itself is, um, I think it, it's extremely conservative in the sense that there's not a lot of change. Like uh, over the past 10,000 years, very little has changed apart from war. You know, <laughs> in the grim darkness of the future, <laughs> there is only war. That is yep. sort of the, uh, the tagline for the original Warhammer 40k um line this game proves otherwise though this is uh there is your goal in this game is not just to fight wars you are going to be you know doing other stuff uh the last thing i'll say about it just your characters as well end up i think in this um for the rogue traders more so than maybe any of the other 40k games that came out for cubicle 7 can really end up being completely unique Rogue traders are the kinds of characters who will have, the only rivals to that might be the Inquisitors um, because the rogue traders genuinely get to be ex exposed to things that 99.99999% uh, of the rest of the Imperium would not even dream of. Xenos technology, alien races, bizarre worlds that they would never have. And as a result of that, they grow up this reputation. You know, think of the the, the sort of um, the stereotyped view of like our world's pirates, right? With the strange stuff, they might have a musket that they took off of, you know, a Spanish one. And there's a sword that was uh, in the melee style and blah, blah, blah. Like um, the road trader will be one of, and the, the crew of the road trader will be some of the most cosmopolitan people you would ever encounter anywhere in the Imperium. Uh, the Inquisitors 
do that to a degree as well, but they are still subject to much more scrutiny than what the rogue traders are. So that is what you're gonna be playing. Um, bold, you know, uh, uh, imperial-sanctioned uh, capitalists on the edge of known space. Indeed. Okay. <laughs> I got it. All right. Yep, yep. Uh, then, um, so let's talk about what you're going to be playing in this game. Uh, okay, so let me, before I do that, uh, Sean or, or James, anything else that I missed? Uh, oh, I, I guess, uh, oh, sorry, the only thing I can think of is that saying it's Star Wars rather than the others is uh, a good way of getting it up there, but it's Star Wars on steroids even then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, the Inquis if, uh, the Inquisition um, uh, has, any Inquisitor has uh, a right to call in what's called uh, an exterminatus, which is basically like, we're going to raise this world. Heresy is, is too deep in here. We can't save it. So we're going to kill everyone on this planet to make sure that heresy doesn't spread. Or like, or, or even like it's a planet away. And so this planet's perfectly good, but we're going to kill it so that the next planet over can't spread to this one. Like it's just, you know, <laughs> it's... Beyond, beyond all space and time. Like it's just, you know, utterly, uh, it's over the top, way yeah. over the top. Definitely. Yeah. All yeah. right. Uh, so then I was going to say it's Kafka esque too. Like, I mean, I mean, yeah. we may escape some of it since we're going to be, you know, in the outer realms, but uh, like in the Imperium, you know, it's ridiculously Kafka esque and suspicious and, yep. you know, who's watching who and, you know, all sorts of uh, intrigue nonsense. You know, that's <laughs> one fun. of the characters you can play in the only war game is a commissar. <laughs> so mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. If your uh, fellow PCs retreat from combat, you, you can shoot them. <laughs> right. Right, right. Yeah. Um, Good times. All right. Uh, so then, <laughs> as far as the characters, so the, the way that your character, like we're going to go through the character creation, there's lots of cool decisions you get to make over the course of uh, uh, making your character. But the biggest decision that distinguishes your character from anyone else's is the careers. So I thought we'd take a quick look at those first. We talked a little bit about this beforehand. You have access to the PDF in here. Okay, so I loaded that in there. And on page 37 of the rule book, I don't know if it's 37 of the PDF, there is a list of the careers. Now, the careers are uh, the Arc Militant, who is a warrior without peer and a leader of soldiers. The Astropath Transcendent, a communicator of the communicators of the Imperium. Uh, there isn't long distance communication by technology. The way that you send messages over long distances is through psychics in the setting. And the Astropath uh, Transcendent is the way that you do that. Soul bound psychers, which means they have a connection to the Emperor. Um, Explorator, which is the Masters of Machinery, Seekers of Ancient Technology. They are uh, connected to the Adeptus Mechanicus. There's the missionary, emissaries of the emperor's word, healers and leaders. I've uh, suggested to, that we don't have one of those on board because I just don't <laughs> want to, I don't want someone to be a, a really, I don't, I, I'm not sure I'd have a lot of fun with a religious dog, you know, a zealot on board, um, who's not a foil for you guys. Um, navigator, the mutants and the pilots of warp. That's how you actually trans the, the ships are moved through spaces with these navigators, very much like Dune in, in a way. There's the rogue trader, masters of starships, leaders, diplomats, and rogues. There's the Seneschal, who's the keeper of secret knowledge and subtle investigators. And there is the void master, pilots, gunners, and masters of space. Now, one of the things we talked about before was that um, we think that somebody should be playing a rogue trader. Okay, if uh, I think the game does not expressly say you have to do that, but it would be more fun if you were, you were the guys um, who were driving what the ship's doing and what, you know, uh, missions and um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, endeavors or something like that. What they're called? Um, any event. Uh, endeavors. Yeah, it is. Nice. Way to go, Madison. Um, whoever is going to be, uh, uh, it would be better to have you guys in charge of that. But otherwise, um, any of the uh, uh, other careers, with the exception of the missionary, I think are outstanding choices for this particular campaign. So, um, what we talked about before, Jeff, you said that you didn't care if you, uh, you, you wouldn't, you'd be fine playing a rogue trader if uh, someone else didn't want to, uh, but I'm not sure if there were any of those other careers were of interest to you. Uh, James, you had said uh, the uh, missionary or the explorator as uh, your initial kind of thoughts. And then Sean, you had said either the rogue trader or the astropath transcendent, right? 
Mm -hmm. So did Dave? Uh, did Dave? Dave mention? has said uh, he's either the uh, Seneschal or the Arc Militant. I think, and he was leaning more to the Seneschal. Yeah, he seemed pretty intrigued with the idea of the of the Seneschal. I guess I cool, cool. I gave up the militants since uh, you felt uh, that might compromise the campaign somewhat. Oh, uh, the, the missionary, the missionary. Uh, Not yeah, there. the missionary. The Arc militant yeah, is perfectly. So, there's gonna be a lot of shit to shoot in this game. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my bad. Uh, then, uh, but I'm, I guess I'm swinging slightly towards the navigator as well. Then. Oh, cool. Okay. And cool. the navigator and the astropath transcendent do not share the same rules for powers. So they actually have their own kind of thematic space for, for stuff. And there are, the game gives good reasons for why you're going to lead the ship. There isn't the situation of kind of like next generation, you know, Star Trek uh, going forward where like the captain stays in the ship. Usually the most important people get off the ship. Again, 80s sci-fi. <laughs> right. All the people who are in right. charge of shit, you guys right. are all going right. down to do stuff. Right. The commander of the aircraft carrier always goes on this little boat. Off exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what are you guys thinking? Who, who, uh, any, um, uh, any one particular career? James, you're the one that doesn't seem. Oh, yes. First off, Jeff, is there another, a second one that seems of interest to you? Oh, any of them are interesting to me, so I, I don't mind picking last. And if some, no one else wants to be the rogue trader, I don't mind doing that either. So, like, I'm easy going. They all sound interesting to me in their own way on this mission, so. And I will say that every single one of them has very cool things about them. Like, yeah. uh, there's, there's very cool stuff that all of them get to do in one way or another. Like, I'll let the guys choose, you know, more about the world, what excites them more uh, playing, because, you know, being new to it all, you know, it all sounds interesting to me. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what do you guys think? I mean, I mean I'm, 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 I'm the same. I mean, as, well, as far as, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at those uh, two, and um, I, I'm pretty good with either, so... Um, so let me ask you this, uh, when you really think of it, what more interests you to uh, to be playing over the course of, of what is probably going to be a, a fairly long campaign, knock wood here, but uh, you know, the, these are not short adventures. So is it more interesting to see the, ex the expansion of a rogue trader over time or to see the expansion of an ascendant uh, or a uh, astropath transcendent over time? Um, it's a tough one. I, mean, I guess the, the I one thing that's sort of linked up in that too, over the course of long-term play, there is the potential of corruption from the warp that does mm -hmm. not come mm -hmm. by way of the uh, rogue trader. That only is something that'll be uh, as you gain power and uh, whatnot, uh, that you run the risk of, you know, kind of uh, running in the red as it were. Does that sound yeah, of yeah. interest to you? Or, you know, is it more that you're interested in being in charge of the ship and seeing, uh, you know, greater involvement in the uh, Coronas Expanse as you uh, develop, as the campaign unfolds? Um, I mean, I would say that, I mean, I would say that outside of, outside, I mean, the Psyker powers I've always just found fun. So that's, you know, that's kind of what that is. Yep. And then besides that, I think, you know, the Rogue Trader is probably the most interesting to me um so that's what i'm dealing with that so I Kev, what if we, we all sort of have two that we like or or two or three what if we do the like in the game it says to like roll up your stats and do that first so maybe so the stats might dictate who's yeah. better at what like you know it might fit a yeah, little better for like, like for who sure. should be the captain or who should be the militant guy okay you know well, sounds like we've narrowed it down to certain areas anyway. Yeah. James, do you yeah, have any yeah. uh, thought as to which of the two that you've mentioned or any of the other ones that, that particularly interest you? Uh, no, I mean, they're all good. Uh, I I think uh, those two particularly, but what do you think fits best? I think uh, Jeff's idea is good, mm -hmm, so yeah. maybe we do that. But otherwise, is there anything that will work best with the... So one thing I will uh, say the, is the... Your plans. Uh, there are certain... Um, yeah, I mean, each of them has their own neat thing they can do, and like they're not quite your your characters in this. You will find are pretty competent. They're not like on the competent, like can't do everything, but like um, the 
the characters can do stuff outside of their one narrow specialty to a degree. Um, so if you don't have, say, like the, the thing with the Explorator is that anything tech related is gonna be their shtick, right? Like that is mm -hmm. really where their stuff goes. The Navigator has to a degree some overlap with some of the other things. Like they've got very impressive uh, powers to like, you know, influence others and things like that. Uh, they also get to, you know, fucking drive the ship as it were. <laughs> so there's that. Um, and in um, the navigator, I can't remember what they, what role they play in in uh, ship to ship combat, but like that is a thing that will happen in this campaign as well, and um, that gives them some, you know, thematic space to to occupy. So it's I all these things it will. And the, the other thing I'll say, whatever roles you guys do not play, you will have NPCs f uh, filling those roles that you guys will control. And I'm not like, you guys flush them out. So like, <laughs> they will, well, I mean, for one, like the game, you do have, you know, um, a narrative meta currency to try and keep you alive, but it is the 40K universe. You know, violence is dangerous. Uh, you guys are a lot more survivable than say, the average inquisitor or inquisitor's assistant, or, you know, the troops in the Imperial Guard that, that you play in only war, but you're not space Marines and you're not cruising around in giant power armor. So, you know, um, having backup characters that you guys have sort of set up as supporting characters before is not necessarily a bad thing either. Which is to say, if your primary character, um, you know, once you create your primary character, you're still gonna have an opportunity to have control over some of the other characters in the game. Right. We'll get to sort of try out some of the other roles vicariously through the NPCs that we're in charge of. Yep. Right. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna be rolling for any of those things. I'm gonna set them up so that they're very like easy to use. The character sheets are very comprehensive and, and uh, quite responsive. So it shouldn't be a matter of, um, you know, shouldn't be too difficult to have the NPCs uh, just, you know, used as, as supporting characters. So does that help at all, James, in, in terms of... Um, yeah, I think I'll try for... Excuse me, sorry. I need my tea to keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah, no the The... Um, I think I'll... Well, let's do the build, but I'll start with the idea of Navigator, I think. Because mm. it's... Very it's cool. A bit, well, the... Uh, the Explorator's cool, too, but... Well, yeah, they're both. <laughs> it's a tough thing. <laughs> I think with the way with, that it's looking, like we sort of have everything covered because, you know, James is leaning Explorer or Navigator and Sean's leading Rogue Trader or Astropath Transcend It. I think I would like to play the Militant or the Void Master, or if no one else is, I'll be the Rogue Trader. So like I have three options. Yep. I think we kind of have everything covered with yeah. not really <laughs> any overlap other than like you know if sean doesn't want to be the rogue trainer then i'll fill that role so that we don't leave an npc captain yeah but i think we're cool. pretty good to uh okay see where the dice go then our next thing guys is uh if you could each you may have done this already uh oh yep you've already except for uh james go ahead and lay claim to one of those uh character sheets and then one by one, you're gonna roll 2d10 plus 25 for each of your stats. And then once that's done, you will have an opportunity to re-roll one of them. Uh, you have to accept whatever the re-roll is, but you know, you if you roll, t uh, you know, snake eyes on one <laughs> of them, you really can't get worse than that, so. Right. Uh, so go ahead. I mean, uh, we've in other games we've done one by one, but you guys go nuts. Uh, go ahead and roll. Um, okay. I think they're all. So you roll them in order in this game, right? Yes, you do. Yeah, like classic D and D style. And it's two D twenty plus uh, two D ten. 10 plus <laughs> You're gonna have amazing stats. Why are my stats yeah. so good? Two uh, D ten plus twenty five for each of them. Yeah. Plus twenty five. Gotcha. Yeah. Reaching for a book uh, there. Oh. Wait, did you put it in edit mode? Oh, starting? Sorry, type? Yeah, okay. Let's see, I'll follow along with... Uh, there we go, yeah, okay, that one. Sheet. I love the look of these sheets, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, they're good-looking things. Oh, there's a crapper. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a lot of ballistic skill for my character. Uh, does it automatically... Oh, no, cancel. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh my gosh! 
I'm gonna be pretty uh pretty wussed out so far. Good gracious. All right, sweetie. And it's just hi to everyone. Okay, yeah. seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Jeff. Are you rolling two d10 or one d10? Because it's, oh. it's two d10. <laughs> I thought I was rolling two. Uh, no, you're only rolling oh, no, one. I'm only rolling one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you saved. All is well. All is well, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't okay. Worry, so I, I need to don't... roll one, two, three, four d10 in a row to add to my first rolls. <laughs> yeah. It looks I'm like, like man. I, I haven't even rolled over a ten yet. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's All great. right. Okay. So. I still managed to roll two d twenty anyway because I'm dumb. Yeah. <laughs> had, to, had to redo that. Uh... All right. And then because we, uh, I've got the stuff set up in the game if we do get a chance to play today, but I don't think we're in any rush. Uh, so, you know, if we take our sweet time to go through each of these steps. Uh, I think that's, um, you know, and we start uh, the actual uh, gameplay proper in two weeks time. That's uh, fine. Nice 10 though. Could be fateful that my worst stat is willpower. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Although you do get one free reroll. True, true, true. Yeah. True. So 2d10 plus 25 uh, on the reroll if you choose to roll it. Mm. All right. Oh, I, the strength is pretty bad too. Let's see here. Okay. Oh. Once everyone is done, let us know. Uh, I don't think I have a good skill yet. Well, they're okay. No fours yet. Okay. Because that's like your ability, right? But yeah. There we go. Finally. Nice. Oh, I'm a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I am. There you go. That's interesting. All right. I mean, I guess that would work for a couple of the options that I was looking mm -hmm. at. And remember, too, once you get to the end of it, you do get to reroll one of those stats. So if you do have something that's quite low... Uh, it's not locked in just yet. The other thing is, is one of the things that happens over the course of creating your character is you will get advancements that will add, I think, plus five to your character or to your stats. Is fellowship like charisma? Fellowship is, is charisma, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I mean, I got a 44 intelligence and a 44 charisma, so I could easily uh, play the captain. Or fellowship. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 44. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely, um, there is For assets sure. uh, that are strengths are. I have a really, really low agility. Okay. So once you finished up, uh, has everyone done their... No, let's re-roll it. Okay. I doubt I'll be worse than 30. Nice. Nope. Beauty. What, okay. a, what a beautiful move. Okay. Thank you, roll 20. <laughs> now, um, does... Has everyone rolled their stats and done their re-roll? I'm debating yes. on the re-roll. Mm. What's your lowest? What's your low number? 30. Oh, yeah, do it for sure. I got 30 into 31. 30 is strength, 31 is willpower. Mm. Oh, like will, yeah, like his willpower. That's the you got to do willpower. I mean, the... Otherwise, you're closing the door to uh, psychics. I mean, and, that, and that's kind of why I'm hesitating. Do it. Like, do I'm trying to make it. the decision now. I'm yeah. kind of wondering, too, rogue trader and willpower. Obviously, not like. A psyker, but I wonder. Uh, take a look at the skills. The skills all have yeah, uh, things yeah. listed for what they make use of. Mm -hmm. um, fellowship seems to be the ones. Commerce fellowship. is fellowship. Um, mm -hmm. Interrogation is willpower, though. Mm. Yeah. So. Versus kind of like melee ish yeah. with. Uh, yeah, but strength, you know, maybe. the rogue trader doesn't necessarily have to be the one doing interrogations. Sure, sure on the ship, right? Like, I, yeah. one thing I read about the game, about the Rogue Trader, they're, one of their greatest strengths is using the right person for the right job, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right, let's see. But here. I think if you want to play a Psychic, I think you reroll the 31. 
if you want to leave that door as an as open and like you know a possibility i guess i'll go okay willpower coming up oh oh my gosh, gosh. <laughs> wow. is it worse yes <laughs> that is unbelievably wow. terrible luck <laughs> oh my god uh and james right. uh, is yours finished up um, yeah, I'm trying to figure to re-roll agility or ballistic skill. Mm. So, Sean, that's so sad. <laughs> yeah, so that's, uh, uh, I mean, the... Honestly, neither of those is really critical for either the, uh, uh, the function. I'll, I'll re-roll ballistic. Nice. There you go. 39. That's how you do it. Very cool. Okay. All right, now, I don't think that it lists the bonus automatically. Uh, you don't need to do that yet. What the bonus is, is the tens digit of your thing. There are certain things that will add the bonus for your skill, uh, uh, but uh -huh. you're gonna see, we're gonna modify your starting stats with uh, some of the next steps we go through here. So we have your base stats right now. The next question we need to deal with is we then proceed, I actually wrote this down here. Uh, we've got your origin path. The origin path will give you some skills and alter your stats and, and whatnot. First thing we pick is what homeworld you are from. I'm on page uh, 16 of the core rulebook. Uh, the worlds on offer are death worlds, which are basically like they are so dangerous uh, They may be full of jungles with awful monsters on them or like sand planets full of killer bees or you know Killer bugs or something like that uh, Death world is the first one void born your family has spent a great deal of time navigating the wilds of space not living on any given planet a forge world Forge World is where the Adeptus Mechanicus are in charge. The entire planet is dedicated to the construction of the different devices that are needed for the keeping the Empire going. A Hive World, which is basically like, imagine uh, an arcology that holds billions and billions of people in it. That's what the Hive Worlds are, is these massive structures with... Uh, striated you know um societies uh, with different tiers of, of uh, people living on top people living on the bottom but all within the massive enclosed arcology there's the imperial worlds which is sort of like a catch-all for everything else in the imperium you might come from an agro world you might come from a feudal world you might come from something else is but you are sort of blissfully ignorant of what is happening outside of the imperium for the large part and finally, noble born. You originally come from a noble family, one of the aristocracy in the Imperium that may run a world or may run separate worlds or whatever. So uh, you get to choose one of those. Which type of world? What's your home world for your characters, guys? And I think there's also a useful table on page, if I could read it, 24, which suggests which home worlds fit which Class. Yeah, for, for the different Ooh. careers, too. Yeah. Yeah, if you want that to inform what um, you're, you're coming from. I think, because I've also got an idea for the navigator, yeah. one of the navigator types, I'll go with Noble Born. Noble Born, very cool. So then you take a look at the Noble Born modifications on page actually 24. Can I roll it, Ken? Um, You can, yeah. It's, it's a 1d6, I think, then. Yeah, 1d6. You're okay with that? Of course, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. You know I like to fit randomness <laughs> into my character, Jen. Because <laughs> then it makes you twist some of your preconceptions. One. Or one. Death World. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Death World's kind of cool. Death World's nice. definitely badass. Yeah. Plus five strength, plus five uh, toughness, minus five willpower, minus five fellowship. So, okay, so, and Sean, what about you? Toughness. Um, what home world are you from? Now, one of the things that they also mentioned, just uh, to put in mind uh, in mind for you guys, uh, there are things called intersections, uh, where one or more origin paths meet on a single section. An intersection is said to exist. An intersection presents an excellent opportunity for characters to begin the game with shared experiences or shared aspirations. For example, if you happen to have uh, both of you selected the hand of war at one point, or both of you came from a death world, that would be a point of intersection, and we can talk about how your characters have some kind of connection based on that. 
it's encouraged, it's not mandatory, but it's encouraged as a way of sort of uh, establishing that connection between uh, the different characters. Okay, so it says I gained the survival skill. Does that mean that's like trained? I checked the tr trained box. Uh, if it, survival is a basic skill, or is it an advanced mm -hmm. skill? The, uh, basic on the left, advanced or on the right? Uh, on the right. On the it right. It says all death worlders are adept at resisting the dangers of hostile environment. Death worlders gain the survival skill. Yep, so tick that first box. Yeah, but, oh. Meaning that it becomes basic for you? Yes. Oh. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it. Ooh, that's not good. Okay. Yeah, what the advanced uh, the advanced skills are like, you can't attempt them at all if you don't have any kind of training in them. Um, if you have training in them, then you you know uh, you you're free to use them and you can get better at them. But uh, basic skills anybody can try. While you guys are making your selections here, what about you, Sean? So what either... what homeworlds? Okay. Um, I am thinking Imperial World. Okay. Imperial World, nice. Imperial. Melee weapon training primitive talent. Okay, so actually, you know, um, if it's an advanced skill, uh, put it at trained. Okay. Yeah, you have basic, so you actually start at trained, not, not at uh, basic. Oh. They're the same. Uh, is it a basic skill? No, like, so on the advanced skills, if you click, oh, do you click both things then? Because uh, so, it gives you a total on the side. Yeah. And if you click basic, it sets your total to 22. If you click trained, it sets it to 22. If you click both, it sets it to 44. Uh, let's see. I, mean, I don't know how the character sheet what works. What is your, but... oh, I'll take a look at your character sheet. Yeah, you, you can take a look at it. I don't. I just don't know if you click both then, yeah, if it's trained. Or... Let's see here. Uh, so we've got your agility with basic. Uh, yeah, because basic, what the basic gives you is half of your governing stat. At train, yeah. you use your full. So yeah, click both of them. Okay, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Yeah. Training. Okay. Primitive. All right. So what are you thinking, Sean? What home world is your character from? Imperial. Nice, very interesting. What type of Imperial world do you think he's from? That's the one that has a lot of, and then also think about what your respective uh, home worlds would be like uh, for Jeff and James as well. What type of death world are you from, for instance? Uh, from the depths of the jungle hell of Katachan to the predator-filled deserts of Luther McIntyre, Death Worlds have a well-earned reputation as some of the most dangerous planets in the galaxy. I think Vin Diesel was abandoned on one at one point. <laughs> <laughs> and for the Imperial Worlds, yeah, it's, it's, it covers such a vast... Oh, sorry, the Imperium covers such an utterly vast area of the galaxy that it's impossible to conjure an image of a typical Imperium world. No such thing exists. Amongst the uncounted worlds of man, there exists endless variety. Agro worlds, for instance, are little more than vast farms producing farm food for Imperial hives and legions. Mining worlds produce ore and raw materials. Um, cardinal worlds are ruled by the Ministorum. Uh... uh, 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 uh. Garden and Pleasure Worlds are another example. So, wide variety of different places you could be from, John. Yeah. And then the Nobleborn, uh, I'm guessing if you're going to play a Navigator, James, that it's going to be one of the Navigator families. That's yep. what you're thinking? So, nice. Uh, a, magis a magisterial house. Very cool. Okay. Oh. Which actually, it doesn't. It's not terribly good for you being noble born in a way. But <laughs> we'll go with it. And we'll go with it anyway. Well, it uh, you, the the the, imper the noble takes down your willpower by five. Mm. Yeah, plus five by fellowship. One of your, 
Yep. And fellowship's useless, but the uh, willpower's a big one. But anyway, we'll go with that anyway. Okay. Literacy. Okay, so now let me pull that. Literacy. Yeah, and whatever your skills you get, you get them at trained. I have, let me double check. I've got the, uh, I printed off our, the living errata for the game too. Oh, nice. Because cool. I'm a great big nerd. Oh, can I roll? Ow! Oh, I have my funny bone. <laughs> oh, you okay? Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah, it just no, no. feels terrible. Gamer no, no. injury. The, st the starting skills are basic. Oh, are they basic? Nope. Noble-born characters begin play with literacy, blah, 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 as untrained basic skills. So oh. you don't actually get the negative, you, but you don't get anything more. As untrained basic, that's... Huh, because the other ones, it doesn't say... So I have two fate points. Where are those are? I wrote down all the stuff because some of it, but I'm not sure where to put on the character sheet yet. So I'll yeah, uh, let's see. Add what it is as we get there. Let's see for the yeah, yeah. It, for Forge World, it says untrained basic skills as well. Okay, well that's why. Cause the thing is, it's does it mean that it? Hold on, does it say that it treats advanced skills as basic skills? Oh, sorry. Yeah, because that's yeah, a, there's uh, a difference class? there. Because uh, one of the things is there is, if you look in the skills section, uh, there is a thing where it says... Oh, advanced, yeah, it gets you... Sometimes 10, an explorer so has an opportunity to treat advanced skill as a basic skill, usually because of a trait acquired on the character's origin path. This simply means that you can make skill tests with that skill, even if you don't have the skill trained. So if you do gain... Right. Yeah, if you gain the skill, you will gain training in it, but if it expressly says that you'll treat it as basic, that just means that you've got an automatic default of half of your stat in the advanced skill. Yeah, because the basic avoids you having the penalty. Does uh... well, it means you can attempt it at all. Oh, okay. Yeah, like it, it, it will set it at any, just like any basic skill. You can use any of the basic skills uh, at half of the stat, uh, even without training. Once you get training in it, you get to use your full stat for it. Uh, the advanced skills, okay. however, you normally don't get to use them whatsoever. Literacy in. Okay, literacy in. So literacy, you would just tick the basic box on it? Uh, under the advanced skills. Uh, so this is right. And then as for Jeff, you asked about the background. I think it goes under journal. Because you see under journal, you, that's where you can fill in your, or, your origin path. Oh yeah, there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Home world. Death. Death world. What is your world. death world like? What do you think? What kind of planet you think you're from? Um, I'm imagining a jungle planet. Yep. For sure. Just with lots of predators and. Camp. Okay. You know, very dangerous. You know, even the even the plants are dangerous. Like one of those kinds of jungles, right? Yep. Love it. Oh, no, don't eat that. That'll kill you. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch that. <laughs> oh, that one's okay. You, you'll just have, you know, you'll just be sick for a few days. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Sean, what about your uh, planet? What are you thinking? I am thinking a pleasure world. Um, that, the, uh, that the nobles prefer when you have wealth without limit. <laughs> nice. Everyone have their homeworld stuff recorded. Yeah, I have it all on a piece of paper. I haven't necessarily converted it all to the sheet yet. Yeah, not necessarily uh, sure. Oh, for the benefit, uh, you guys can start with maximum fate points. Uh, you're going to need them over the course oh, okay. of the game. So just start yourself at the uh, whatever the highest amount is from your home world. Uh, just take that. Cool. Okay, these are the like you don't die kind of points. Or yes, right? they are the narrative medical currency points. Um, you will roll your wounds, though. Yeah. Okay, so I get three fate points. Okay, and I would add everything to the sheets today because that that way it's done. Like we're, we're spending. Oh no, this... absolutely! It's just yeah. the things that are like um, I can gain the jaded or resistance to poison 
trait. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. Or talent. When we get to that part of the book, go. I'm going to yep. read what those do. You and know what, Jeff? You can one. see uh, page 91 through to 93 is the cheat sheet for it. It gives a list of all the talents and it has the, uh, it, it tells you like a, a, a short version of what the benefit is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh... These books are all really well laid out. I can't uh, say for them. Slow. Come on. I even downloaded it. It's still so as wounds hiding. Oh, interesting. Come on. Can't scroll. Scroll. <laughs> scroll. It's so slow. <laughs> Page ninety one is what uh, you want for that. Um, what about, so it has here. Um, Go to page 92. Okay. Why? What is this? Uh, what, what was the determination on skills? Just check basic if you get it. Uh, if it is, well, it'll, so yours is the Imperial Room? Yes. Yeah, if, uh, Oh yeah, they okay. trade them. So you would pick ba uh, literacy and speak language high Gothic as untrained basics. So you just their advanced skills. We tick the basic box next to it. It'll give you automatic training in it at half of your stat. Yeah. Like yeah. how does a how does a downloaded PDF crash? <laughs> like come on, jeez, <laughs> it's unbelievable. I jumped to page 91 and it just like, no, 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 you did not. <laughs> We're not doing that. <laughs> it showed me page 91, but then it stopped letting me do anything else. I couldn't scroll, zoom, oh, nothing. Yeah, it does not like Where, the jump. There's, um, oh, those little jump? eyes are nice. Um, they explain like what each skill, um, has little details about each skill, yeah. that little eye for each. It's a wonderful uh, character sheet. Uh, like oh, whoever, whoever is uh, whoever put this together is did a great job. Honestly, all I mean the two we've used thus far, the Death Watch one and this one, both of them are really good. Yeah, yeah. How about, how about if I try this? Oh, okay. It's way better. Yeah, that's awesome. Really great stuff, and I, I okay. like the look of it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I'm assuming that. Talents are like good things. Talents are kind of like feats, sort of. Um, it's it's you know non skill based set of uh, advantages. The two you get to choose from, I can just tell you, Jeff here. If we're yeah, they're jaded. The, the only one I didn't know. I mean, the other one is resistance to poison, which is pretty straightforward. Yeah. But I didn't know what jaded. So resistance did. to poison would give you plus ten a bonus on resistance tests against poison and jaded. Uh, you never gain um, insanity points from ordinary horrors. Oh. So you're just tough as shit. You've been exposed to all sorts of awful stuff. It takes a lot more than, you know, um, a crazed cultist charging at you to, to startle you. I like that. Yeah, okay. So that's a... Where do you, traits. Under talents. Oh, yeah, traits. Okay. Add. Trait name... Jaded description. I guess I could just put the short description. Uh, it's a talent, not a trait. Those are two different things. Oh, these are talents. Yes. All right. Oh, so oops. etiquette is also a talent. Uh, etiquette Sorry. is a talent. It. Uh, well, that was a trait. No, that. Etiquette is it not a skill? Yeah. Well. Because it gives you bonuses on skills sometimes, so there's no. I'm just wondering where to, I'll stick no, no, it. No, so a, what, if you read it, what it says is uh, etiquette. You would put that under trait, uh, and then it would be plus ten to any interaction skill tests when dealing with high authority. So that's any of your yep. social skills or any fellowship skills, yeah. basically. Gotcha. So that's what I've done. I put it under trait. Oh, and perfect. Just put, yeah. And put the text in. Yep. And then legacy of wealth. I guess I don't need to. We'll just remember to add one to this. Profit <laughs> so because of uh, James's character's background, you guys get plus one to your profit uh, factor, which is like how much money you guys get to start with. Nice. Okay. okay and... hmm? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no worries. There's a reason I put him on staff. 
<laughs> <laughs> it does seem like Sean's playing the rogue trader already. <laughs> so. Well, I think he kind of broke his right, psychic right. shot when he rolled oh. that 29. So. Seriously, it was over. It was over when I rolled the 29. All right, so we yeah. know who's playing the rogue trader. We know who's playing the navigator. Jeff, which one are you leaning towards so far? Um, well, I think still the two I'm interested in are quite open. Art uh, Melton, what was the other one? The void guy. Oh, the, the uh, void master. Who, yeah. Very cool. Okay. They're both still interesting, I think. Excellent. All uh, right. Uh, so how are we doing? Vendetta. Love it. Every noble house has sworn enemies. I'm sure you guys will not have any issues with that. I hate uh, causing problems from backstories in games. Just ask Robert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's right. And so melee weapon training primitive uh or basic weapon training sorry is another talent uh no no no. the where, where which one are you looking at uh it's if it's something bleeds. else that i got yeah oh yes it's yeah a... yeah so that's where it's worth considering uh so uh, melee weapon training primitive that just means uh it, it basically it gives you proficiency with a certain group of weapons right but it's listed under talents yes so it is a talent Okay, yeah. And uh, let me see. Yeah, I don't think okay. Arc starts with that, if that's one of your... Weapon. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oops. So you were used to fighting tooth and nail against uh, the horrors of the jungle. Right, and there's a bunch of these, so this one is primitive. I guess by primitive, they would mean like weapons like we're used to here on Earth. No, 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 because the, the um, this like is like spears and swords. Yep, and... it's full on primitive. Uh, so the primitive weapons in this would include, let's see here. The primitive weapons, here we go. Bolas, bows, crossbows, handbows, flintlock pistols, muskets, slings. That must be like the ballistic ones. Those are the primitive ones. Yeah, then great weapon, grox whip, improvised weapons, knives, kraken tooth daggers, shield spears, staff, sword, truncheon, and warhammer. Those are all primitive melee weapons. Nice. Oh, because it did say me melee. Did it say yeah. melee? Yeah. yeah. Melee weapon training primitive. Yes. Okay, so I should put that. It's not basic, it's actually melee. Ooh, you're a little bit different. Death Worlders tend to be slow to put their faith in uh, anyone other than themselves. Minus 10 for all interaction tests made in formal surroundings. Yeah. Your Ooh. character and James's character will be fun to have in a party scene. <laughs> yeah, meetings, that kind of shit. Yeah. Really likes to express his opinion. <laughs> now, which you think, uh, I need to be connected as well to a group. Mm. Um what would be uh, out of the list there's you know the whole usual shebang Ooh. i was thinking there's administratum astropaths and government mercantile what might be interesting there I, thinking... I can make any of those work the one that probably won't actually i can make any of those work to be honest like the uh whatever one seems like it would be the most interesting thing for your connection is anyone else going to be very connected to the commercial side? Are you going? Are you doing your birth right now? It, it's no. It's one of my uh, noble-born things. Oh, I'm noble supremely born. connected. So one thing I'll let to, since Sean, since you are playing the rogue trader, one thing to, to consider is uh, the ways that the warrants come to the rogue traders are two different ways. One of them comes to the individual. One of them comes through the line. So the warrants can be passed down father to son to son to whatever else or to daughter or whatever. Um, the other can be it's an individual who has made them a name for themselves and has got it for themselves, which may not be connected to the line. Mm. It's kind of like landed nobility versus just named nobility, I guess. Yeah, kind, yeah. kind of. Mm-hmm. So the reason uh, I ask that is only because if uh, if your character is new, to, if you're playing a, a rogue trader who has his own thing, then perhaps that answers James's question of whether you have I connections see. with it or not. Um, is it helpful? It is, I'm mercantile. It, 
it seems more appropriate that uh, with the new character that um, that I pro it's not probably not about me that it's probably um, you know the father kicked me out of my pleasure my pleasure dome on the uh, on our planet and okay. said okay it's time you idiot you know go out and <laughs> go out and find do something useful you you son of mine and uh, and so I'm you know he he throws me the writ in a tube and kicks my ass in a ship and you know mm -hmm. uh, pick a crew and I don't want to hear another word about it and okay. off we go. So does that help with your decision, uh, James? Uh, yeah, because I'm thinking if we're going to have a seneschal, that's going to be commerce, isn't it? So maybe that's as well. That's mm -hmm. maybe going to be. I'm wandering into. Seneschal territory. Well, there's as nothing well. wrong with the overlap between them either, only because like that that will also uh, give you opportunities to have connections between the characters. This will help uh, help us understand how okay. these characters came together over time as well. Let's do that then. I'll go mercantile. Nice. Okay. So I've got peer um, connections with mercantile and also nobility. Okay. So. Excellent. And then. So where should I put that I'm paranoid? That would be under traits. So that one goes under traits, not talents. Oh, okay. Ooh, one of the big rolls, 1d5. So that's okay, paranoid, so that's minus 10. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. You know, big money, big money. Yes! There you go. Nice! Now where do I put my wounds? Under combat. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Which is actually quite nice. Ah, it's a 13. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah, plus double your starting, your toughness bonus. Okay. Uh, then, how is everyone doing with entering their homeworld stuff? I just have one question. Yep. I have plus 10 to pinning and shock. Yes. Pinning and shock. Oh, I guess that's just another trait. Uh, yes, pinning happens when someone is firing in, in um, uh, what do you call it, uh, full auto uh, at you. You have to make a pinning check. It's a carryover okay. from kind of the uh, one ver version of the uh, tabletop game, but it also kind of makes sense. Like it's just, if someone's firing a fucking machine gun over you, it is not the, you know, um, it is not uh, a natural instinct to jump up into that. I guess a storm bolter would be something more appropriate for the setting. So if someone's firing a storm bolter over you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and then you guys did your starting wounds and we did. Toughness? Uh your your starting fate points start at maximum available for your home world. Uh your wounds you will roll though. So you'll be one D five plus two plus your toughness bonus. A double and your toughness says, bonus. Yeah. Oh. Remember your tough any oh, stat bonus is just the tens digit of your stat. Oh, I see. Okay, so I roll one d five plus two. Yep. So let's roll one d five plus two. Come on, big money. That's seven. One five. That's average. Uh, and then what's your toughest bonus? Uh, four. Nice. So thirteen. So, okay. Okay. And then that's under wounds? Yes. It's under combat, you said? That's right. And Sean, your character's all got all your stuff from Imperial? I do believe. Yeah, I didn't get any talents. Is that unusual? Um, I think it's just sort of the... You didn't get talents, but you didn't get any oh, drawbacks. Oops. Okay. The way that... Just uh, I'm missing anything. No, it's just the, the Imperial um, world, I guess, are what? the boring ones. So, <laughs> excuse me. How do you add the wounds... Oh, it's, on, it's under combat. Combat is done. Okay. Next thing you guys will be picking is your birthright. Um, for in the 41st millennium, life in the Imperium often follows a set course. Hi, Anna. Anna says hi. She brought her bone out. Yeah. I don't know if that's propitious or uh, a bad <laughs> sign. Um, in the 41st millennium, life in the Imperium often follows a set course. From birth to death, most Imperial citizens follow an immovable path towards their fate. However, some rare few are able to rise above their beginnings, however humble. 
So your birthright, the uh, options in here are Scavenger, Scapegrace, Stubjack, Child of the Creed, Savant, and Vaunted. You'll have to take a look at those. because It's all on page 24 or 25. Yeah. And these are relatively oh. minor yeah, things. Oh, there, there's six don't of we, them again, don't, right? Don't, don't we need to pick the ones on the row below, but to the left or the right oh. of above? Do you? You Hold sort on. of work. Maybe you do. Hold on. Let's see here. Because I think you have something like Noble Born. I've got to choose between Savant and Vaunted. Let's see here. And if uh, I then... Path. Oh. I think. Oh, maybe. Yeah, hold on. Oh, is that how this thing works now? Mm. You can sort of do this. Oh, yeah. The, the only ones, the two. Uh, uh, I guess the three sometimes. So the straight below and adjacent. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, so, so like I should be a scavenger or a scape. Scrape, I think. Okay. And then once I, I, if I... Be... Oh, Okay. Okay. So the choice leads to, to directly. So I think if you're oh. escape grace, you can then be a criminal or tainted or renegade. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and if you're on the edge, you're only you're only stuck with two options instead of three options. Yep. So there you go. So then for uh, Jeff, you are either scavenger or scapegrace. Uh, Sean, you are child of the creed, savant or vaunted. And uh, James, nobleborn is either savant or vaunted. So we perhaps have our first uh, interface or whatever it's called, intersection, intersection. What are you guys thinking? I'm just reading what they are because mm -hmm. they're. Yeah. That's interesting. Let me see how they. Oh, because I know they introduced in into the storm. They introduced some new options. I wonder if they. Oh. Um, amended the thing here. Let's see here. Advanced origin. Ooh, this is all going to get very strange. Can you go can you go ecclesiastical, uh Jay? You can go back to your uh, original. You can get a little piece, a little taste with that I don't know if that's in your range though. That is oh, not. I can okay. No, no, I can go comp I can go down to zealot, so I can go heavily oh, onto the zealot. ecclesiastical. There, there you go. But I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go chosen by destiny, which will um, cause me all sorts of problems. So, wait, sorry, which one are you going with under birthright? Sorry, birthright. I'm going vaunted. Vaunted. Okay. Uh, Sean, do you have what you're selected? Probably vaunted. Interesting. Okay, so this is the intersection between you two. Right. And the, uh... Jeffrey, what are you thinking? Scavenger or escape race? Is Jeff still uh, in the... Yes, I'm just thinking. Okay. I'm still here. I just had to put, I just put my uh, PDF on this other monitor because uh, mm -hmm. I was having troubles with the Chrome one. I think the scapegrace, it sounds more interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, you know, I'm a bit of a rogue and a lawbreaker and uh, got by with my wits, which makes sense for my high intelligence. Okay. So. so you get the... Oh, honey. Uh, Anna's not happy with that selection. Hey. Um, <laughs> you gain a sleight of hand as a trained basic skill, plus a bonus of plus three to intelligence or perception, and you suffer either 1d5 corruption points or 1d5 insanity points. I'll let you dwell on that, and then the other guys get the decadence talent, a bonus of plus three to either agility or fellowship, and you suffer minus three to perception and 1d5 corruption points. You hedonists. Well, yeah. you know, if those guys are a little bit corrupted, if they're both a little bit corrupted, maybe I should be a little bit insane. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, don't worry, I'm going to join you there as well. So, uh... <laughs> Last roll... So One then, D5? with this intersection, do you guys think of how, uh, so Vaunted, you grew to adulthood you, under the, uh, upon the spire of wealth and privilege that towers, uh, in some cases, literally high above the common imperial masses. You expected their obedience and lived upon the fruits of their toil, surrendered to your extended family in solemn fealty. 
Uh, it was in the upbringing among uh, uh, the upbringing amidst proud scions, wastrel lords, and high-priced retainers of silent, watchful competence. All the distractions available to the wealthy, bored elite were arrayed before you for the taking day after day. Mm, those years were fantastical exhibitions, sordid entanglements, strange drugs, conspiracies for the sake of show, mindless rivalries, and carefully hidden violence. What do you think the intersection was between your characters? I mean, I'm I'm from a pleasure world. You could have, you know, visited visited. I, I um, think that was a good one. I'll have visited because the thing about um, the navigators is, you know, you're going to get corrupted. Yeah. And you're going to deteriorate. So you, many of them, uh, live hard, die young. Nice. Because they know make the most of it uh, before you start succumbing to. Awesome. Uh, uh, so then, with Scapegrace selected and the two in Vaunted, um, then we go on to the next. So, Lure of the Void. Uh, Jeffrey, you can go to Tainted Criminal or Renegade, and the other guys can go to Zealot or Chosen by Destiny. What are you thinking? Chosen by Destiny. So that's, um, that's plus one fate what point page? and one d10. Uh, so this is on uh, Lure of the Void. Starts on page twenty-six. At least the options do. Uh, okay. So yours would be, uh, yeah, Zealot or Chosen by Destiny. And uh, Jeffrey, you got Tainted Criminal or Renegade. Renegade. Yeah, I'm just gonna read through them. Sure. Mm. So tainted is like people don't like me because I'm like literally evil or dark or you're vile. I'm, I'm in the certainly eyes of not good in the eyes of the god emperor. <laughs> so. Oh, you're a mutant. Oh, no way. Ah, uh, nothing uh, wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And this would be. Oh, weird. but it says I have to spend 200 XP. Uh, oh no! If you uh, in, rather than rolling randomly, uh, you could spend 200 XP of the 500 you will get to make your character. You could oh. just spend 200 to select one rather than roll randomly. Oh, because some of them are like horrible, and some of them are kind of beneficial, basically. Yeah. yeah. I see. Being a mutant can be uh, it can be neat, like a neat power or something like that. It can also be just some like weird abnormality or it can be like a really crippling or um uh yeah a, re a really uh, imposing limitation oh my god what are you thinking if i if i'm tainted i gain 2d10 more insanity points <laughs> yep what I, how is this insanity point system work <laughs> I already rolled a four. Well, you know, we, we can cross that bridge when we get to it. You don't need to worry about. Um, okay, uh, like what's a crazy bad number of insanity? I, I don't know. You to don't be know. honest. Okay. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, you're not going to. It's not like no, travel Jeff. where you're going to lose your character during character generation. Oh, you would. It wouldn't get that bad. No, okay. no, no. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> it's better if you don't know. <laughs> 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 So, uh, James, what are you thinking? Zealot or oh, Chosen wait, wait, by wait. Destiny? Oh, wait, oh, uh, you only choose one of those. Okay. I'm going with Chosen by Destiny. Nice, because you're both Chosen by Destiny. Oh, crikey, we're... Uh... <laughs> okay. I mean, you might have a... Um... A sub choice that's different because yeah. chosen by destiny you got to pick one of those three right mm -hmm. oh right. right yeah you cho you only choose one of the three like I, I don't have to be a mutant i can be a mutant oh, yeah. i can be insane or i can just have a deviant philosophy mm -hmm. so which one have you gone with sean i will it's hard not to i think just uh, go down the path right well not that um i mean choosing by destiny wouldn't be crazy for me either but I think I will go duty bound, and I will choose, of course, duty to your dynasty. Oh, you, oh, you're a savant, are you? Okay. Oh, oh that's me? cool. 
so in, in so um, you, if you're doing this in person, uh, you'd be sitting down and drawing different colored lines through it, and you're handing it back uh, and forth between the different character uh, players. Uh, yeah, because if you're vaunted, you can use Zealot or Chosen. By destiny. Oh my god, mm. should I be a mutant, you guys? Is that funny? Oh, I'm a mutant. Yeah. I'm already a mutant. <laughs> Are you? Oh yeah. A navigator's a mutant. Oh. oh. When you meet me, you'll realize why. I've got a third eye. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Now I'm tricky here, xenophile. Because that's good for fellowship tests, but, but you suffer minus five penalty to willpower tests involving alien artifacts and alien psychic powers, which I can imagine could be a tricky one. Mm. But so, maybe that's cool too. I wonder if... But then having one fate point and also being a bit insane could be quite funny as well. Mm -hmm. So I guess the careers are likewise limited for where yeah, you end up, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Right, you have to steer yourself to the career you want. That's pretty cool, because you guys sort of ended up with the... <laughs> the ones that you were sort of leaning towards. Oh, yeah. I've, I've forgotten yeah. that. I missed the last life. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, you caught that we had to use this in the first place. So, I mean, <laughs> you're entitled to miss the last line. Uh, right, because where you're trying to get to, uh, Navigator, yeah. Yep. yep. So Actually, and yours too, Jeff. Like oh, on the Rogue Trader, you have to end at Prestige. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. And um, you're you're heading in the direction of Arc Militant and Voidmaster, so yeah, they're right beside each other. Yeah. I think I can easily get there. Uh, so, so which do you think would be funniest, Xenophile or Fated for Greatness? Hmm. Xenophile, there are aliens uh, both on your ship and in the campaign. Uh, oh, they... I'll go with Xenophile. It's probably going to cause me all sorts of problems, but what yeah, the hell? Most definitely. <laughs> what are you thinking, Jeff? Um... I think it's... I think I'm going to go with uh, Renegade. Very cool. So my... That's her birthright? Yes. Right. Uh, no, this is right. Lure of the Void. Your birthright was a last thing. Uh, you went scape, oh. scape grace with your yes. birthright. Yes. Sorry. One thing behind on my typing here. <laughs> scape grace, and then my Lure of the I'm a renegade. And Sean, which one did you go with for your Chosen by Destiny option? Um, I think I'm going with Xenophile. And Xenophile as well. Okay, cool. Oh, crack. Well, I mean, there's, so what did, what did, um, who else went it was in the pile? Me. James. And then, oh, then, well, and then what did you do, Jeff? You went Renegade. Which of the selections did you pick for Renegade? I'm going to go with, I think this one kind of fits uh, with our game and what's going on. I'm going to go with a free thinker. Nice. Well, I mean, because I could go with, um, I mean, Fated for Greatness is certainly not crazy either. I don't think it's uh, the end of the world if we're the same on this. Seen no, no, I agree. Tra trader. And, and I, I mean, I, it's not like I'm going to be using, you know, alien, uh, alien psychic powers against you guys. Come on. <laughs> um, I mean, it'd be either, either one. Whether, you know, Fated for Greatness for a rogue trader or Xenophile, they're both, they're both right there. Mm -hmm. um, um, Uh oh, I think I'll else? go faded for greatness. We'll make it. I'll make it. I'm, I'm gonna go. Uh, so, chosen by destiny. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. The rogue trade is slightly batshit. Oh, Matthew, thank you so much. Very generous of you. Thanks so much. Uh, that you donated uh, uh, for oh, the nice. stream. Uh, yeah, Matthew, there is a link in the description of the video. Uh, that's in the for link to the Discord server. You can find it a little further down with all my uh, the socials. Uh, the links that are on there. And you are more than welcome to join us over there. Thank you again, too. It's very generous of you. Um, I also gained an enemy. <laughs> the Ecclesiastes. The Ecclesiarchy. Ecclesiarchy. Remember how we were yeah. saying they blew up planets for heretics? I'm sure it'll be fine for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, they just don't like, yeah, they don't like that I'm a free thinker. I got my own thoughts. There you Damn go. Damn right.
Maybe that's why I'm hiding on this fucking rogue ship. Mm -hmm. This rogue trader ship. Which did you go with, Sean? Um, are we to, uh, I went for faded for greatness. Nice. How much insanity yeah. did you get? We're cut. It's coming up. <laughs> Go on. It's a 10. You know, you want it. I am, I am open to destiny. Whatever happens. What's this chosen by destiny? That's what you got. That's what you took. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Chosen by destiny. Faded for greatness. Yep. Let's nice. see. Here. I don't let me just check something here. And what did you take James? I'm uh, I'm a Z I'm chosen by destiny xenophile. Seven points of no, insanity. I think this all comes part of my uh, living at large and. Uh... Yep. All right. So then, next <sighs> is the trials and travails. So with uh, Jeffrey, you can go press ganged, calamity, or ship lorn. Uh, and then James and Sean, your choices are High Vendetta or Dark Voyage. So I can't go Shiplorn if I want to get back to Arch Militant. Mm -hmm. So I kind of need to decide right now. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Press Ganged or Calamity. Well, or if I want to, but if I want to go Void Master, I could go to Shiplorn. Most definitely, yeah. But if I want to be the Arch Militant, mm -hmm. you know, I'm like turning out to be like pretty high intelligence, which is kind of leading, I feel a little more Void Mastery than like Arch Militant. Because okay. the Arch Militant's supposed to be like a physical powerhouse, right? Uh, well, they're a warrior, and most weapons that are used in, in the 41st millennium are range weapons. Uh, Voidmaster, uh, almost exclusively intelligence checks for starting uh, skills. Yeah, see, I'm kind of, so I think I'm going to go Voidmaster, which means I could go shit well, Let's more. see what Arc Militant... Uh, yeah, Arc Militant's most of their skill starting skills are all intelligence as well. Turns out uh, Dex is not the master stat in uh, <laughs> in this game. Mm. So what do you guys thinking? Um, it's a really interesting uh, character generation system. It yeah, is. Lot, I really like it. Mm -hmm. It is. Well, and I'll tell you that the way it's expanded in Into the Storm is that each of the boxes has two different options. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, my so plan for is, next is for the next campaign. Well, I think <laughs> over the course of our uh, of play, what I'm planning on doing is doling out more books as we go. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll be introducing stuff like there's a whole uh, rulebook called Battlefeet Coronas, which is like uh, a heavily expanded uh, ship customization and ship combat set of rules. Nice. But like, nice. I think mean, we walk as it were before we run. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm also gonna take a look online because I've, I've I've heard uh, two things that it's just like that the combat system for ship combat is a mess, and I've heard that it's great. So mm. we'll see. Actually, my buddy Jared Rasher, I know he's run this for an extended campaign. I should harass him. Mm. Let's assume it's great. I'm gonna assume it's great. Like we're gonna have fun regardless. <laughs> good call. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeff has been the only one who's played the one game that I we stopped playing partway through. We're like, no, this is just fucking awful. Okay. I have trust they of... won't have done it that bad. James, you and I have the same choices, right? Yep. Yes. Which one are you thinking? Uh, of? They're James? both really good. They are. I, I like know. Them both. I, I agree. I agree. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm trying to find Forbidden Law. Uh, That's pretty sweet. But where is it? <laughs> I can't find it's it. It's in the Black Library, James. Where would you expect <laughs> Forbidden Lore to be? <laughs> uh, I think... I, oh, okay, here we go. Forbidden Lore. Okay, yeah. Heresy. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's under the okay. skill groups in your character sheet. Yeah, because I'm I'm torn because forbidden lore of going uh, Xenos. Ooh. 
because that fits with my xenophile thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, but and we'll definitely see. To... One of the yeah, cool things with the um, this particular campaign is it really uh, it, it plays the hits, as it were, as far as like classic forty k adversaries are concerned. Yeah. Mm. But blood will have blood appeals. Hmm. Yeah. No, because yeah, I've got they... my vendetta right going. I've got my well, that's coming out my nobleborn thing, wasn't it? That I've uh... got a a. Uh, I've got a vendetta, so high vendetta kind of fits with that. Mm -hmm. So I'm torn, tough. Oh. Brook, no insult seems a bad one because I've got low willpower, so we're just going to be uh, in fights all the time. <laughs> well, I've probably got a lower willpower, and I'm taking that, so. <laughs> oh. That's great. I kill you all every yeah. time you walk in a room. <laughs> yep. One, one side glance and it's on <laughs> no actually I oh you get I think all I'm of the traits tool. FYI I know trials and travails you get both of those blood well blood and uh, brook no insult so you selected a high vendetta oh get, right yeah, yeah you, yeah, get, you get both of them under what? Uh, well, it says under uh, page 27, it says, when making a selection from these trials and travails, it is important to note that all of the traits below are received. Mm -hmm. So oh. it's not like the previous one where you make one out of three selection. Right. right. Well, on all of mine, there's a good thing and a bad thing. Yep. Trials and travails. I'm going Dark Voyage. Nice. Uh, ooh, yeah, single lore. Marked by darkness. Ooh, more insanity. Yeah, you can't have enough insanity. Heck yeah. There you go. Because you want uh, an insane mutant oh, on the ship. sorry, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, actually, don't, don't hit it twice. Thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> Can I hear if it was an accident? I wonder if I can refund it for you. Hold on. Uh, no, I, I can't. I don't have a refund option there, Matthew. I'm sorry. I, I know you didn't ask for that, but just uh, I am. Sorry. I'm going to go with Calamity. Calamity? Okay. So what does that do? Um, I basically some kind of disaster or famine or something it's it's sort of like what forced you into like being on this ship i think is sort of the the idea of this one yeah um because my other options were like press press gang which is like forced to do it which meh and ship lorn so i thought calamity sounds interesting maybe something happened to my home planet yep. or um i believe george would call that the inciting incident <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so what it does is I gain inured to adversity. Mm -hmm. I gain the light sleeper talent and my choice of the hardy talent or the nerves of steel talent. Mm. But I have bad news, guys. I have the echo of hard times. Thanks to the adversities of the past and a sense of priority that promotes caution and the needs of the present over acquisition and risk, you reduce your group's starting profit factor by oh, minus one. Come on now. You got plus one from James. Hey, yo, yo, yo. hey when the God Emperor <laughs> gives, the God Emperor takes away. <laughs> uh, so the, let's see here. Um, so the, sorry, what page was the talents on? Uh, talents, 91, I believe. Oh yeah, 91. I just want to go read those. So I have yeah. either. So I get light sleeper. Yeah, 91 is just the uh, cheat sheet. If you want to see the full uh, de ex explanation, it's in the chat, the section that follows that. Yeah. Hardy. And then for Sean and James, what did you guys go with? Um, I went with um, the Vendetta, High Vendetta. Nice. What did you select for your uh, talent? I'm checking those out. Um... Mm. Now, if you get a for, if I can get a sing, you may gain a single forbidden law skill. Yes. Is that just basic or trained? Uh, that is trained. 
If you're gaining okay. the skill, it becomes that. Uh, the only time you would tick the basic if, is if you get something like in your background where it says you okay. gain that as a basic. Okay, cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Light Sleeper is amazing. Oh, yeah, what's it do? Uh, I count as awake even when asleep. Nice. <laughs> Now, hold on. How often have you encountered over the past five years any difficulty while your character is sleeping? I, Kevin, this happens to us every fifth session on Night Below. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest feat I have ever seen in one of Kevin's games. Look, my character's got a couple things going so far. I got survival and now always awake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, also, you're I'm ready hard, for Kevin's game. You're hard to be scared as well, too, so your horror base is covered there. Yeah, right. That's right. I'm <laughs> used to seeing shocking things. I, like this is this character is made for a Kevin game. <laughs> Which of you guys took the wilderness survival ability? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hardy. I took uh, paranoia. Oh, interesting. What does that do? Uh, let's see. Explorer knows the danger lurks behind every corner and knows the galaxy will hit him as soon as he lets his guard down. The character gains plus two bonus on initiative rolls and the GM may secretly test his perception to notice hidden threats. Ooh. The price of his eternal vigilance is a twitchy disposition and the inability to relax. <laughs> <laughs> We got a twitchy captain who never relaxes. This is why you were kicked I, off the pleasure planet. Like, look, man, you're fucking hard and everyone's anyway. mellow here. Get the fuck up. I'm twitchy, but I take I take no insult. No slights will be tolerated, so yeah. watch yourself. I think that he is twitchy because he's been removed from the pleasure planet. The pleasure that planet was keeping him mellow, but that now that he's be. been, like, off all the pleasure, you know, for so long, he's mm. just... Yeah, now I gotta work. <laughs> How did your insanity uh, roll go there, James? Oh, all right. Uh, remind me. Uh, two, 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 two. Yeah, I've got uh, 1d5. Oh, and you got resistance okay. to fear as well. That's pretty awesome. Uh, no, I've got to choose. Oh, you uh, choose which one? Okay, I got chose, it. I chose um, insanity of three. I okay. chose uh, forbidden law, Xenos. Okay. Nice. What's oh. your current insanity, James? Uh, a corruption, rather. Oh, my corruption's only one, and I, my insanity uh, is three, so I've uh, uh, I rolled well on the corruption. Nice. nice. <laughs> All right, so then mm -hmm. next up, guys, is oh, your... Oh, wait, I got one more thing I want to tell you about, because oh, yeah, it's really exciting, too. I'm also hardy, Ooh, which is, is the explorer always heals as if lightly wounded. I'm Excellent. assuming that's a great thing. <laughs> nice. I don't really know the heals, the wound heal rules, but that sounds awesome. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think it depends on how close. Yeah, it's like how low your your wounds are, or how close they are to zero. If I remember yeah. correctly, that's that it dictates how um, how you know, relatively speaking, how uh, badly injured you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so then, next up will be your motivation. Uh, for, let's see here, yours was Calamity, Jeffrey, so you're either Fortune, Vengeance, or Renown, but if you want to end up at Arc Militant, it has to be Fortune. If you want to end up as a Void Master, it can be either Fortune or Vengeance. Right. And then, let's see here, Dark Voyage. Uh, so you could go, if you want to end up Navigator, James, Pride or Prestige. And for you, oh, uh, Sean, I guess you have to go prestige if you want to end up as a rogue trader. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. You know, I don't think you can be, yeah, you can't be from a death world and be a rogue trader. Oh. Uh, There's just not enough steps. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's a really neat idea of like passing around the origin path and have everyone draw their lines yeah, out. That's yeah. a cool. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Unless, cool unless you're sure than me, in which case it's a straight line and we uh, are <laughs> yeah. exactly the same. Did you guys just draw the line over one another? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> so what are you guys thinking? What's the motivation? I guess yours is sort of predestined there, Sean, but... Uh, which Jeff is the story of him anyway. He is destiny. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Jeff, which of those do you think? Um... Be fortune or vengeance. 
I think I'm going to go with Fortune because that's the one that lets me still have a choice here at the end. Yep. Uh, and then yeah. James, which one are you thinking? You have, uh, mm. you would, if you're going to be a navigator, it has to be either Pride or Prestige. Well, Prestige is good, but I think I'm going to go with Pride. Pride, okay. Ooh, heirloom Ooh. item. Badass. I could get plus three toughness, which is quite cool. I think Anna has given oh. the game its blessing. She's already given the book a kiss. Oh, nice. Thank you, sweetie. Okay. Uh, so, uh, are you going with, uh, sorry, Pride, uh, James? Or I'll you... go with Pride. Oh, yeah, you got the option of the heirloom item or toughness. Heirloom or toughness. Yeah, what do you think? Now, toughness can really get me up there a bit. Mm. But Ancestral Seal looks mm. kind of cool. Whoa. As the heirloom item, plus 10 with a potent respected mark of power. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you have to roll for it, or do you get to choose it? Oh, I've got to roll for it. Yeah, that's a point. Mm -hmm. Well, that's no fun then. I don't know. That well, chain sword's looking pretty some good. Some people think that's lots of fun, James. <laughs> <laughs> so with, uh, uh, let's see here, pry or no uh, prestige. Ooh, yeah, choice game. of talented. Or peer. Yeah. Probably a little tough to pass up peer as a rogue trader. Mm hmm. Because it's dealing with a group that, you know, kind of the. Um... And Jeff, what are you thinking? I went with Fortune, which gave me an extra fate point. Oh, nice. That's a good one. Nice. Yeah. What are you guys thinking? Plus, yeah, that toughness. Will the toughness bump your bonus up, James? It, well, it'll take me to 46, and then I can get one uplift, and I go to 51. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then you add plus two to your wounds. And, uh, yeah, then you got a toughness, but also uh, toughness matters for when you roll, when you get more navigator skills, you have to roll to see if you uh, mutate. Oh. And that's how you control it. Oh, it's toughness. Okay, so yeah. Unless you want to have the amusement of mutating a lot, which could be quite funny <laughs> as well. But, yeah. Yes. <laughs> What's this no, with puddle of the, goo uh, that's in the, uh, in the bassinet? Uh, the, oh, that's our navigator. He... Uh... <laughs> He has had some unfortunate yeah. toughness rolls. Now, I'm with Jeff on the rolling, because I like that in Traveller, but mm. some of these don't really fit him. You mm. like the reliquary and the... I don't, I don't see him as being very religious. Mm -hmm. Right, that's fair. Some of them just don't fit. Whereas the a Ancestral Seal would fit him being an arrogant tosspot. I'm fine with you selecting it if you'd rather. If that's what you want to go with. Like the t it sounds like it would be a tough decision of that over the toughness. So I'm, and that's really the only thing that would be the spirit. I, I don't want to stick you with something that's, you know, not going to fit. With yeah, the I mean, character. the other things are cool, but um, mm -hmm. they're, yeah, they're, bit, they're good for um, warrior types, but I don't mm -hmm. see them as being particularly warriorish. Okay, so then... And why uh, am I saying him? Could be a her. We haven't decided. Very well, yeah. Which did you go with, Sean? I... Talented or peer? I think. <laughs> Which was your peer uh, that you selected before, James? Was it with the uh, mercantile? Uh, um, yeah, mercantile. Okay. Gotcha. It is a good sign when the decisions are tough to make. 
<laughs> for mm. care gen. That's great. I'll mm. go for my toughness. Toughness bonus, Cam. I suffer no fools. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, talented, actually. Oh, interesting. Okay. And uh, plus ten to a corresponding skill test. Which uh, skill are you thinking? Are I'm you thinking make... either charm in the same direction as you know peer in a sense. Yeah. Um, or maybe command, which I'm looking at right now. Someone wants to take a mid-session break here. <laughs> if you can hear her crying in the background. Uh, yeah, big baby, what are you doing? She's so noisy tonight. Hey? Uh, Ooh. She was up with me last night, too, when I was working on that freaking brief, so her, her uh, timing is all screwed up right now. What was that, yeah. Jeff? Sorry? Uh, there's one last thing on here. Excuse me, it says lineage. But I didn't see that on the... Oh, that like one. it's homeworld birthright, lure, trials, motivation, and then lineage. Uh, lineage might be something that only certain. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I just I think saw that. The navigator, I think. Uh... Oh, let's see here. Is that the one that picks the lineage? Yeah, lineage is, is only through um, navigators. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, the lineages are discussed on page 176 of that. But, uh, okay, so I think, Sean, then you've got your everything selected. Why don't we do this, guys? Next step will be the career. Uh, we know where two of you guys are going. Jeff, yours is up in the air. Why don't we take a five-minute break here? I'll let Anna Banana outside, and then uh, we come back. You could tell us what you've decided on, Jeff. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. yeah okay, good. so we'll be back in five minutes, folks.
All right, sorry about that, guys. Okay. No worries. So, we are on the edge of our seat. Oh, <clears throat> we're on the edge of our seat. Jeffrey? I am going to be the Void Master. Nice. All right. So, if you each turn to your respective character uh, tables here. Okay, excuse me. And it's trying to help too much right now. <laughs> okay, so we need to get your face out of the book. Come on. Hey. I know, I know. All right, so the uh, Rogue Trader is on page 40, 40. Yeah. Um, let's see here, Navigator is on page 60. The Void Master is on page 68. There's a list of skills that you automatically get at Trained. Uh, there's also a list of your starting talents and then your starting gear as well. Uh, you will also, if you want to start planning for the spending, you can spend 500 points on the characteristic advances or the rank one advances for your career. I don't think that this game has generic advances. Nope, does not. Okay. Funny thing is that some of the rank ones are also your starting skill. Yeah, the, what they've said in uh, the errata is that like that's intended. It's just uh, it's for the sake of completeness. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, you also get a special ability based on your um, career that you find on page seventy-two. It's like the navigator's warp eye and the boons of lineage and your mutations uh, and the void master's. Ooh, you pick one mastery of space, mastery of gunnery, mastery of augers, or mastery of small craft. And the rogue trader gets exceptional leader. That is okay. a really cool ability too. Holy smokes. As a free action once per round, the rogue trader may grant an ally that he can see uh, who can hear him a plus 10 on any one bonus, on any one test. Nice. It could be used. So the lores we add? Uh, the same, which? The lore skills? Oh, here they are, I see, okay. Yep, yeah, there'll be um, skill groups, I think. Yeah, common lore. Oh yeah, those are pretty cool, the Void Master ones. Being able to re-roll all failed tests is pretty. Mm hmm. 
And we're trained in whatever the ones are at the top, right? Yes. Okay. Forbidden more. Xenos. Let's see what you guys turn off with. Xenos here. are aliens, right? Yes. Xenos. Xenos. Cool. Okay. So. Skills. Common law. Okay, let's see here. Um, so if you're playing the Void, I, I'll bet you... The, oh, yeah, so Dave Stoll, we don't know if he's going to play the Arc Militant or the Seneschal. Hmm. Yeah, Seneschal's got some pretty great uh, mix of, like, you know, barter, uh, commerce, but also deceive. Um... Nice. Yeah. Uh, and so you, you said uh, one more time on uh, what we're supposed to be spending. Uh, you're going to have 500 XP after you complete. Uh, you get everything that's listed under the starting skills, talents, and gear. And then you have 500 points you can spend from either Got the it. rank one career abilities or for your characteristics. Uh, oh, so we don't really get any basic skills or anything or at least i don't mine are all well, like special skills well up at the top that dark box you don't you don't have um some stuff jeff up at the top of page uh, yeah but they're but... all like common lore forbidden lore navigation like none of them are basic or advanced skills they're all just like in the special skill groups below mm -hmm. gotcha none of mine are like i don't know medicine or demolition or anything simple like that mm-hmm uh, I will say the um, the list of the advances under your career, they're not alphabetical. Uh, they're alphabetical by category. So it's like um, skills first, then uh, talents afterwards. Yeah. And everything we get is trained, right? Correct. Yeah. If you already have it as trained, you get one more, one tick up from whatever it is. All right. If there is duplication. Oh, those advanced skills, those are pretty tough. Like, I got trained, but I'm only 19 in one. Like, those are, you got to earn those, did huh? you, Those are tough did ones. Did you tick both basic and trained? Oh, basic. You do both. Gotcha. Yeah, tick both, and then it should calculate as your full stat. Yep, there we go. Okay. Very good. So, so if you got basic from your background, then it doesn't do you any good if you get a starting skill, because you end up at trained either way. But trained right? is your full stat as opposed to half of your stat, which yep. is what you get with basic. Yeah. Cool. Scholastic. Hold on. Okay. I keep doing this. Starting talents. I got a few. Mm -hmm. uh, is it true that if you let's see, if you're already if you're already basic, does that make any difference in something you get now? No. If you just being trained is being trained is being trained. Got it. Yeah. Very good. Just the basic allows you to make use of an advanced skill at a limited level without having to be actually trained in it. Gotcha. So if I always if I already have melee weapon training primitive, and now I have melee weapon weapon training universal. Does that like add different weapons? Yeah. Like you list them both? Should say under the talent. Uh, so let's see here. Melee weapon training. Talent grows primitive or universal. Uh, the explorer is trained extensively with hand to hand weaponry, becoming proficient in virtually all hand to hand combats. Uh, the universal group includes chain, shock, and power groups and allows proficient use of all those weapons, and then primitive requires the one is in the areas we talked about before. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm just saying I have both or whatever, yeah. yeah. Okay, and I have nerves of steel. Wait, is that a trait? Nerves it's of a steel? talent. Isn't it? Isn't nerves of steel a talent you Oh, got? yeah, a talent. Okay. Right. okay. And let me check the errata. Now that... Anna... Oh, whoops. 
has retreated. Ninety-two. Let's go back over here. Let's see what happens if we get the same talent. I am really hard to pin down. Mm-hmm. Because first I got that bonus of plus 10 to being pinned. Yep. And then Nerves of Steel is I can re-roll tests to avoid being pinned. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah, I get two shots at not being pinned at plus well, I 10. Mean, growing up on a deadly, you know, jungle planet, I guess like there's worse things than people being, sh you know, shooting at you. Yeah. Those. Then I gotta do my gear. So the gear I'm not really sure about. So here, the gear is starts on page uh one well the weapons start on page one fourteen and then the gear goes up until uh one fifty two. That whole section is in gear. One of the neat things you will get to do at the end is once we've uh, calculated your you know your ship and your profit value and stuff like that we're going to make a roll each of you gets to pick one additional item and make a profit roll to try and secure it mm. nice. okay so i got a bc mono sword mm -hmm. or a cc power sword Ooh. Same for my gun. I have a BC hand cannon. Or CC bolt pistol. Then I have guard flak armor. A Micro bead. A micro bead. Yes. A void suit. I'm assuming void suit's like for space. Yeah, void suit uh, is a space suit, effectively. Last ship token. A rebreather. go. Micro bead is a calm bead or short range communication device worn on the ear. Uh, good for communication out to about one kilometer. Bad weather, dense terrain, or intervening rock or plasteel can greatly reduce the range. Oh, or beggar's cloak. Two bottles of um, sec. I'm guessing that's like a healing potion. Wh which is it? Uh, two bottles of Amasec. Yeah, it's a fancy drink. Uh, recorder is like a, a camera. A Amasec is a popular alcoholic drink distilled from wine. It can range oh. from lesser brews, barely fit for firebombs, to well-aged brands suitable only for the finest of the emperor's servants. And yeah, void suit is um, sealed suit intended to protect the uh, wearer in the most hostile environments. A void suit incorporates a rebreather and allows the wearer to survive in vacuum. Uh, many incorporate simple void kits that include tether lines, void steel clamps, and similar small pieces of useful equipment. However, poor uh, void suits may not adequately shield the wearer from the energies of the void over long periods of exposure, leading to sickness or death. Um, so I'm guessing, uh, maybe I'll do my advances, then I'll go do my gear. Okay. Since the advances are on this page. Okay, so you said we have 500 points. 500 points you can spend, and that's between the characteristic advances and the vo rank one Void Master advances. Oh, okay. Okay. 
rank oh, is the sort advances of... okay so the advances are like if it's a skill or a trait oh what do the trait ones do uh talent ones not not traits oh sorry talent ones uh, talent ones grant you that talent oh because it's like got some on there that i already have. yeah again it, it it includes everything on there it there is duplication on it there's they say there's a reason for it because at uh in some of the more advanced rules you can switch you can select stuff from other careers oh like i see i could basically yeah. remove something and get that experience points to choose something else if we were doing that no 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 in advanced rules you can select stuff from other careers oh so uh, okay i got yeah. it right there's sort of like like there's that and there's also like a um a kind of like a prestige class feature in here where you can advance into different careers as you gain ranks so what do the what do the characteristic advances do each gives you a believe plus five Oh, whether they be simple, intermediate, trained, or expert? Well, no, but you pick the one. There, you do them in order. You have to. Buy no, no, it. I understand that, but like, I mean, I'm not sure what you're asking then. Yeah, yeah. Well, like that's <laughs> each gives you five. Each plus five. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, if you took them all up to expert, you could be up to plus twenty in a stat. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Mm, do I want to take any of these? The ones that um, bump you up to the next uh, bonus sometimes are helpful. Yeah, because and that's for um, I'm assuming for both hand to hand and like weapon skill is for like melee weapons and ballistic skill is for like gun weapons. Correct. Yeah, because both of those five points would take me from threes to fours. Mm. So those are kind of interesting. But I don't have any of these. I could use some skills too. I think these weapon tables are bringing me back. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <I'll> bet. <laughs> yeah, good times. Mm -hmm. See no mesh armor. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Oh, and oh, we should record what advancements we do because yes. Yep, and there, you should be able to do that under your journal. Yeah, yeah it's. Or under talents, there's experience and advancements, and then can, there. Yeah, on your characteristics, you can just click the box under the characteristic, and it'll automatically add the five or the ten, etc. Oh, nice. That's a little. Um, under the skills, you mean? Under, oh, sorry, under the characteristics, if you're doing that. Oh, oh, they have advancement boxes. Yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and then you record under your. Um, what do you call it? It's under your uh, journal where you spent the XP? So like under, okay, I'm going to put like earned XP 500. Right. And then it's total XP spent. Yeah, I can type in there as I choose them. Yeah, because that, that, the uh, XP spent is what dictates your rank. You guys start with 4,000 XP plus the 500. Oh, yeah. so should I put 4,500? in my yes. total and yep. then once i've spent my 500 put 4500 spent yes okay oh, i forgot yeah. about righteous fury makes sense yes oh why can't nice. i type in there hey no type oh sorry no, you have 5000 in total after spending your initial 500, your character XP total should be 5,000. Uh, the reason they've uh, you start with a higher amount is because it's uh, it's used as a way of comparing characters from this game to the other sister games. Oh. So like a I think a, a Death Watch character starts with like 13,000 XP. Mm. Yeah, because they say you can bring in the Dark Heresy one, but they have to have 5,000 XP then to yeah. catch up. I gotta check to see what it is for only war. Cause I think it's even more like when you roll stats in only war, it might be two d ten plus fifteen. So uh, yeah, the characters are are not nearly as uh, competent. Keep you humble. Yep, give you something to work towards. Yeah, that's right. I've heard good things about that game, though. They had people that had good times. With I the, have you know, heard. You... Yeah, I I read a bunker story online about a uh, a DM who. 
basically made them go through like five waves of characters before they finally, you know, started wow. playing with the actual characters they're playing in it. Like a funnel, super funnel, Warhammer 40,000 style. <laughs> yeah, basically. And then the survivors from all those five waves or whatnot, that's what actually made up the starting campaign. Wow. Yeah. Okay, now Kev, when, so for example, when I'm doing my advancements of my skills, mm -hmm. it's 100 points each. I would go from, I would just check the trained box, right? If, if you I do, spend 100 XP? Yes, if you don't have training in it at all, it, like if it's a basic skill you don't have training in, um, well, I mean, regardless of whether it's a dance or whatnot, yeah, click on trained, and then if it is an advanced skill, make sure you're ticked both basic and trained so that it right. calculates the number properly. And then if you're already trained in it, you get to do one more tick up. But right. it costs more, right? Uh, I don't think so. Price? No, I think the advance is... The cost is based on, I think, your chart of your... Of your, of your um, job. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the yeah, the, the most you can get. So like, you can take dodge oh. if you're not trained in it as a void master for a hundred. But to get dodge plus ten, you need to get two hundred, and you got a prerequisite of dodge. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it. But if you're already, if you if you if you wherever you already are, you can plus you can pay one hundred to get the next one. Uh, no, you because you need oh. to get to get, you would need to be wanting to get plus ten, and you need to be in the Void Master uh, case. You need to be ranked two in order to buy that. Ah, uh, got it. Yep, you can only buy. Uh, you guys are only, I believe, a thousand off from your next rank. Mm -hmm. So, oh. two thousand, two thousand off. Gotcha. Yep. Interesting. I will say that at the, by the time we start the campaign proper, you guys will be ranked two. So whether that's gotcha. uh, like dumping a lot of XP for the short adventure or adventures that we play before we get to the campaign itself. Um, one of them, like the first one is really just to get our feet, you know, wet with uh, the game itself. Um, we'll see how that goes. We might do another one afterwards. At the end of the day, it's just getting you more XP and getting more, you know, story behind the characters anyway. Mm -hmm. So, but neither of those, both of them are quite short uh, things. So it should be like one session, maybe two sessions to get through each adventure. Okay, so the commas in the skills um, were two different things. So like when it said I have pilot, spacecraft, comma, flyers, those are two different skills. Yeah, so if it says- Ability to pilot spacecraft and the ability to pilot uh, flyers. Yep, you got it. Okay. Perfect. It's in brackets if it's um, a specific of that. Oh, I see what you're asking. Yeah, yeah. So you're trained in both pilot spacecraft and pilot flyers. Right. And yeah. I'm trained in both knowledge, common lore of Navy and war. Yes. Right. Not, not Imperial Navy war, but Imperial Navy and war. Yes, exactly. Got it. Okay. Anyone see how you put the armor into this. Yeah, I haven't. That's why I left it till the end. Let's I figured that would be an all big uh, figure out. Because <laughs> you, you can't go. input your armor uh, Is it under... Let's see here. So you can't... Oops, what the fuck did I do? Uh, are you not... Yeah, that's uh, it's zilched out. How did I do this in? Hmm. That's critical hits. That's wounds. Hmm. Let me take a look at the non your character sheet. So I'm not. Oh, we can do it later. Uh, oh, sorry, Kev. You said our total should be five thousand, right? Five thousand in total. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for this, let's see here. All right. Uh, combat. Here we go. Okay. Melee weapons, things, wounds, hits, size modifiers. Ah, it's on top. The AP 
right underneath the, the relative section. So like where it says head, if you click where yep. it says AP, you can click on that and enter a number there. Oh, sorry. Duh. Okay. I'm actually it's quite good, my... Oh no, I don't have anything there. <laughs> Arms, body, Whoa. legs, four. Okay, so I'll put down Dave's Explorer. Characters in this are called Explorers, you may have noticed. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. So how are these selections for XP coming? Guys, what are you, Jeff, what are you leaning towards? So, so far I've gone with the, all of the characteristics that I was allowed to take for cheap. So I've done agility, <laughs> ballistic skill and willpower. And the reason I, part of the reason I did that is they all, well, the agility didn't, but the ballistic skill and the willpower both benefited quite greatly from the five points. Okay. Plus so agility it... seemed um, important to my character. Okay. Uh, it's for piloting things is all based on agility. Mm -hmm. What did you spend the 200 then, extra on? Then so far I've taken driving, the skill of driving ground vehicles. Okay. And I'm going to choose one other skill. I'm either going to take awareness or dodge mm. or potentially the secret tongue of the rogue trainer mm. which might help me to communicate with the uh, captain i'm assuming mm -hmm. well i'd have to take it too they don't give it for free there's nothing for free here I oh you don't it. have it oh it didn't well come with I, i'm not sure I, I mean i'd have to spend on it i'm not sure yet I have a... mm. yeah oh, well I if like you the, don't i, I like won't the, I like the idea, though. Um, I mean, it's it's definitely on my radar, uh, I will say. Mm -hmm. Well, you tell me. I, I have 100 points left, and if you take it, then I may take it. I, I like to create little ins between the characters. I figure um, yeah, yeah. since James is the navigator, I think that the Void Master and the navigator are going to work pretty closely together on the ship in, in a lot of ways. I'm assuming because if I'm kind of running the mechanic, you know, the ship flying it, whatnot, and he's, you know, warping us around, then we sort of work together a lot there. Uh, Jeff, which of the special abilities did you select? Oh, I haven't done that yet. Yeah, Sorry, page, what page is that? That was 72. Page 72. Oh, I need to look at those. Special abilities. I'm, I'm being dumb here. Where does the experience points go? Talents. Talents. Don't. At the bottom. Keep going down. Ah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. Some of this stuff's <laughs> totally bringing me back. Cybernetics and implants. That's so crazy. <laughs> that stuff. <laughs> That's good stuff. Okay, so what do you guys think? Um, I was thinking of making him the pilot guy more than the gunner. So, like, the, the master... The Void Master is sort of either the main ship's gunner or the main ship's pilot, and I thought I'd be the pilot because I thought that would be... Whatever you think. But I'm, I'm I got mas Mastery of Space. The Void Master can reroll all failed tests with maneuver actions aboard a spaceship. Or Mastery of Small Craft. The Void Master can reroll all failed pilot tests with small crafts. Shuttles, heavy lifters, gun cutters, starfighters, bombers. Like when we're off our big ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are the two choices there. What tough decisions here. <laughs> Let's go with not. 500 is not much. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the special ability go? That's. I yeah, I didn't know that either. Think, I just put it under talents. Yeah, my better trait. Trait. Uh, again, let's take a look here. So because it's that is a separate. Right. Uh, it's not really from the talent list. That yeah, would make yeah. sense that it's kind of more like a trait. It's like who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with mastery of space. I think it goes under uh, traits then. Okay. Because traits are sort of the catch-all. 
Now, let me, you know, while I'm sort of making shit up, how about I look up traits in the index? Okay, re-roll any... Traits 364. No, re-roll all. Failed. Pests. Ah, here we go. Uh, skills and talents represent the ability and knowledge gained over the course of a character's life. Traits, then, are innate abilities gained through, uh, gained by virtue of birth and racial circumstance. Uh, they may be gained through other means uh, later in life, but almost never by choice. Uh, certain traits come from their birth world, their destiny as uh, revealed to them during the origin path. Um, yeah. So there may not be... I, I think... Th it's not a talent for sure, so uh, the t the traits might be the, the place to put it. Yeah. I will tell you, Jeff. I don't think I don't think uh, uh, what were you, secret tongue rogue trader is going to make it this time. In yeah. My, uh... <laughs> yeah. Then I won't take it either. Obviously. It's on my list. It's on the radar, but it's not going to make it into the five hundred. <laughs> Love you guys. Trying to speak in like uh, low gothic, but it's like pigeon or what do you call it? Like pig low, low gothic. Yeah. <laughs> It's lay like in old right. K. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So what is what is scrutiny, Kevin? That's like uh, I think it's uh, lying. figuring shit out. Yeah. Figuring out lying kind of thing. Uh, Something like that. This is. Um, uh, oh, you know what? Use skill? the eye. Uh, hover over the eye. Go to go to skills and and hover over the eye and scrutiny. Oh, and it tells you. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's time. awesome. It's pretty sweet. I do not need to look it up. That's big. Love the eye. Mm. It even does more mm. than that. It gives you it gives you a little something something too. It gives you some applications. It's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Mm. Awareness. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, well, awareness kind of makes sense for my character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if your toughness bonus goes up, do you change your uh, starting moves? I, I'd allow it during uh, character creation. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know what rules was written because uh, it's dictated early on. But I'd say yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's see what it says. Ooh. Rules is written. Wow. Your toughness must be cheaper than mine. Mine is top price. <laughs> yeah, unless it's, it's, unless it's all you're buying. Mine's five hundred. Well, that's like James a said that it's, that's one of the signature navigator things. Is that so they get oh, more nice. powers they need to make the toughness check? So nice. Makes yeah. sense that, that would be cheaper. Sweet. Yeah, for me it's two fifty. There you go. A simple. Mm -hmm. So it's not the easiest one. I right. <laughs> I know. I'm debating on ballistic skill, but it's two fifty. Oof. No, I'm gonna go with dodge. Okay, dodge is a definitely a helpful skill to have. Yeah, yeah, I think it makes sense. So then that is all my XP spends. Mm. I just put the five thousand in, um, and then for the XP spends, you put the amount, and I just put up one called base, and I put forty five hundred spent in there, so that the zero leaves me with zero XP to spend. Uh, it should be five thousand spent to date. Yeah, but that's but each of the ones I took are worth a hundred. Like I have six things. If you look at my character oh, sheet, you see what I'm talking about. Four, yeah. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I put okay. forty five hundred spent as becoming the, all the other stuff we did. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Gotcha. Oh, so, I think all I have left is my gear and okay. a name and all that stuff, but. Oh, and then, well, that's, well, once all, each of you individually is uh, complete, then we got some background stuff about your characters to talk about. Then we have your shared resources, your ship mm. and your profit factor. Then you get to each pick one kind of pie in the sky item and try and get it. Nice. Your acquisition. Okay. So how are we doing? So Jeff, you got your stuff all selected. You got your 
special. I just have to add my gear to my character sheet. Okay. Cool. And Sean, how are you going for purchasing your your or spending your XP? Struggling between uh, <laughs> ballistic skill and renowned warrant. Hmm. So what does renowned Rena warrant do? Renowned warrant lets you gives you a bonus for those who you are presenting it to that know what it is. Mmm. Yeah. Kind of almost necessary. It's just a matter of whether I get it now. You know, there's some things, you know, 500, you're just not going to be able to get everything. So, I mean, that's on the list. <laughs> but I don't know if it's a now thing. You know, it's it's either now and you know or, what's going to be the real challenge is when you guys get your 2,000 XP and you open up that second rank and you're suddenly choosing between what's in first and oh, what's in be, second rank. That'll be rough. Yeah, <laughs> the end with truck link. That'll be rough. So how does the craftsmanship affect the item? Uh, I see you. So, let me check the, uh, the weapon. I was looking at that. I'm not sure there is one for, um, here we go. Uh, weapon craftsmanship, uh, if it is good, it grants a plus five bonus to uh, tests made to it. So melee weapons of good craftsmanship at plus five to attack rolls. Uh, if the weapon normally has the unreliable quality, a good craftsman, uh, craftsmanship version makes it reliable. And if it's best craftsmanship for weapon, uh, range weapons of best craftsmanship never suffer from jamming or overheating. Uh, melee weapons of best craftsmanship add plus 10 to test made to attack and plus one damage. Oh, so there is an advantage. Okay. Yep, and the good quality uh, weapons, uh, range weapons, get the reliable what? advantage, uh, which means it, uh, if a reliable weapon jams, roll one d ten, and only on a roll of ten has it in fact jammed. Otherwise, it just misses as normal. Nice. That's I like that a lot. Instead of just having yeah. like flat bonuses, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I think I'm taking ballistic skill. Nice. Mm. All that talk about master quality weapons is really I, wet the appetite, right? Well, it did, and the, but then I passed up on all the um, high quality stuff to uh, because <laughs> to get the uh, what what strikes me is like a pure, not not pure, but uh, uh, let's see, not I mean um, classic rogue trader weapon, mm -hmm. um, you know that few will have but um, one thing to bear in mind is once we wrap all this stuff up you will be able to try and get something with an acquisition check uh, yep everyone makes a single item with an acquisition modifier of plus zero interesting so what's on thinking, mo okay what's on mono sword Mono sword is it's like a again like 80 sci-fi thing with like a um, yeah. blade that's one molecule thick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the kind of thing you accidentally cut your arm off with. Yeah. Uh, and then what it does, it's on. I just don't see it on the list. This is under what your gear? It said mono sword. Yeah, it said B B C, which was like oh, best. It, mono is a, a weapon upgrade. So it would be a a sword, like a basic melee sword with the mono upgrade on it. Mo oh, okay. mono weapons have sp uh, specially fashioned blades with a super fine edge that can easily cut through armor and never lose their edge. Mono weapons no longer count as primitive and add plus two to their penetration. The mono upgrade can be applied to a power weapon, but it ha has no effect whilst the power field is active. Okay. That's cool. And you're already trained. I'm going to add my items in, and maybe before we play the first time, we can make sure that they're entered correctly. Cause sure. I don't know all the... I'll just put down so what I'm the choosing. The sword is listed on page... Uh, 131, and you just increase the penetration to two because it starts at zero with the mono upgrade, it would add two to that, and you would lose the primitive um, trait. Right. So the only trait it would have would be balanced. So 
So damage is. Well, I think it's 1d10. 1D 10 10. R. Which means is really R? good. Yeah, R. Oh, you put that under damage? Uh, damage type. Oh, damage type. R, R. is rending. Okay. <laughs> penetration. Oh, so my penetration goes to something other than zero, you said? Exactly. It's two instead. Two. And you have okay. the balanced weapon quality, which is balanced weapons grant plus 10 to weapon skill tests made to parry. Okay. And my hit mod was 10 because it's best quality? Uh, if it's best quality mono sword, yeah, it'd be plus 10 to hit and it would do plus one damage. Oh yeah, 1d10 plus one. Yeah. Okay, parry mod. A plus 10. Because it's, plus it's balanced. 10 as well. Yeah, because it's okay. balanced. And then strength bonus. It doesn't show anything. Okay. Uh, strength bonus should be, oh, did you fill in your bonuses yet? Uh, what do you mean? If you go to your top of your character sheet where your uh, stats are, just fill in. Now that you've uh, done all the modifications to your character to your stats, you can add in the tens digit in the box, the grayed out box at the bottom. Oh, yeah. And then it should out uh, when it, when necessary on the sheet, it'll calculate that stuff properly. That is one thing that the uh, Death Watch sheet does automatically, and it automatically doubles the appropriate bonuses for the. Uh, Space Marines just being fucking crazy badasses. Uh, the fifty one should be, the fifty one should become five and etc. Correct. Cetera. Yep, it's the tens digit yeah. of whatever your stat is. Yeah, cool. Okay. Now if you go to your combat tab, let's see if it added that in. Four. Yeah, okay. So strength bonus Sweet. four now. Okay, perfect. Great. So before we make our choices on gear, can we um do we get to try for that? That's the last role? thing you do. Last thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Life is tough as a rogue trader. It's all about Even risk and reward. a rogue reward. trader? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sure I'm boning up on my uh, acquisition rolls here so I know precisely how that works. And so then is hand cannon a very specific gun too? Yeah. 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 It is. Okay. Yeah. They're pretty good Thank for the errata in this as far as like making sure things are listed correctly. Nice. Okay, because I also can have a best quality hand cannon. Ooh, which would mean it never jams. I was tempted to be the um, Mechanicus, the Explorator, because then you got a um, bolter. Oh. Badass. Uh, and that, those things are sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, and it's a reminder. Well, I, don't think I can pass. I've oh, got go a ahead. hell pistol, so that's not so bad. Nice. nice. Uh, reminder Best as quality well, hell pistol. Uh, make sure you got your special abilities for your career uh, in included as well from page seventy-two. Yep. I'm just gonna roll uh, my name. Okay. Okay. So the. Uh, the special qualities because it's best is that it or it just doesn't jam and it doesn't affect the penetration or any of these other stats. No. Okay. Wow, I use really penetrating weapons. The hand cannon also has a penetration of two. Mm hmm. Nice. Uh, clip. Uh, what's the, what is our um, what's our chances, Kevin? You you probably already mentioned this, but what what um, what are the chances of us getting it again? How's it work? Getting this, this item. I know, yeah, so you're going to make an acquisition check. Once we determine what your profit factor is, you make uh, a roll. Uh, it's modified. The rolls uh, modified depending on the availability, craftsmanship, and scale of the acquisition. But it says it's not modified, so I don't know. I don't know if that means gotcha. it's not modified by any other factors or it's not modified at all. Let me see if it got further clarification here. So depending on how wealthy you guys are, and that you will not know that until you're all together. Interesting. Yeah, here we go. Um, So where do you? Hmm. 
Oh, special tells you if there's any um, things to it. Okay, yeah. And I think the acquisition modifiers, yes, I, I have a handout in here for the acquisition modifiers. I, I loaded a couple of uh, key tables already. Ah, uh, cool. That's helpful because, you know, I've got, you know, you want to try for so-and-so, but it's like, you know, it might be minus 50 or something. Yeah, we don't know. And like the, from what I recall, the, like the more powerful your ship is, uh, the lower your profit factor is, <laughs> the more like broke you are. Cause you just, uh, you know, you're running, you're, you're starting off as a bit of a ramshackle uh, organization and then uh, you'll be getting more points. But if you've got a low points in ships, uh, then you've got a higher profit factor. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think I figured out my weapons. I just need to do my armor now. Okay. And James, how's the navigator coming together? Navigator's coming along, so I'm uh, in the magisterial house, Benetech. Ooh, cool. Greatest in size and power of the houses are the magisterial houses. Nice. The roots of the original navigator families. Wow. Prestigious. Uh, once per session, you may force an opponent to re-roll a successful test when testing to resist the effects of the lidless stare. That's pretty cool. Pure genes. You're less likely to mutate. Never a bad thing. You're not going to have to carry in a basin. Um, exalted lineage plus 10 to any interaction skill when dealing with members of imperial nobility that would stack with your noble stuff as well exactly yeah, yeah that's so pretty I cool like a whole big pile there. Uh, with a single navigator mutation chose strangely what's your uh, mutation your initial one my mutation will be the um, eyes as dark as the void <laughs> very cool that's awesome. What about your powers? What are you, so you got Lidless Stare and you get one more power. What's your other one? Yeah, I'm torn on that, whether to up Lidless Stare again, because then it starts getting quite dramatic. Mm. Or to pick one of the others. I, I need to ponder that one. That's cool. Now, where's the... Yeah, because the Lidless Stare bit is... Well, i got to be a bit careful not to... Um, uh, for Fred Fire. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Once you guys getting that storm bolter out and uh, <laughs> throwing around some warp stuff, I'm sure it'll be fun. I could just do 1d10 one, one plus 3 energy damage. But if you... Uh, and not reduced by armor level, or toughness bonus. That is badass. And then you stun them as well. But mm. otherwise, you go up to 2d10 and... Um, and you could drive them insane. Wow. Uh, but master, of course, you just kill them outright. <laughs> What's your willpower? My willpower, unfortunately, isn't great. 32. Okay. That's not terrible. Hmm. But it's no, not saying, so I, I don't know, work on picking a number out of the air, 29 or... Yep. <laughs> but you have to go with Shots that. that paying you... attention or he's ignoring me. I, I didn't hear it. No, I was, I was deep in. I was deep in armor I was comparison. Slandering your uh, your uh, uh, willpower score. I think I think, so. For the armor thing, I think um, you put the locations that it protects you. There's an AP that you just type in in the little that's diagram. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But what is microbead? Microbead is remember that's the uh, small comm unit thing. Oh right. Okay. So yep. these are just things to add to my yep. microbeads on page one forty-five. Now. If you want to read about it. Uh, calm up to one kilometer, but bad weather, dense terrain, and intervening rock or plasteel or general DM bullshittery can uh, greatly reduce mm. the range. Mm. If you can imagine where the, my next points are going to go in terms of boosting willpower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great that there's so many things to to spend on too and like yeah 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 definitely uh want to be uh you got lots of, of space to see the characters develop in their own <laughs> way you know i'm not like always walking around with my void suit on correct uh no 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 
That's why you got, I think you got that flak armor in addition to that. Yeah. Yeah, you can assume your flak armor you'd have on all the time. Void suit you're really only gonna wear when you're going outside. Right, just cause it adds to the weight or whatever. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put it at zero, even though I know it weighs eight because I don't want it to calculate that I'm carrying no, it. No, no. And remember, you guys are effectively- Oh, maybe this checklist is like if you're carrying it or not. Hold on. Oh, that just hides or shows it. All right. Yeah. Okay, then I am gonna put zero for that okay. for now, just cause I don't wanna be penalized by eight kilograms all the time when I'm- It's the kind of thing I'll like put on or take off. I know it's a small thing too, but I fucking love the way that the rolls display too. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Okay, so I, I know you guys had a uh, armor on the character sheet discussion. What was, was there a determination? So you see happened? where it says AP underneath each of the locations? That's where you would enter in the relevant armor, uh, the, okay. whatever it is, armor protection, armor Got points. It. Okay. Let me check the um, errata for your starting stuff. I don't want to cheat you out of a, make a roll more difficult than it should be. Um, don't cheat us. Definitely not. More than enough ways to kill you without, uh, if I start tapping into some of the adversaries out of Death Watch, oh mama. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you guys can handle a bloodthirster, right? I'm sure there's plenty in the adventure now. <laughs> no need to beef it up. Yeah. Uh, okay, I have a question. So I have a clothing option here, Sean. And okay. I'm going to say that the clothing option is best, is based on, uh, like, my character, I have to choose between having a Imperial Navy uniform or just a beggar's cloak. <laughs> and... I feel that my character's decision would be on what the captain wants us to wear on the ship. Like, as far as like, you know what I mean? Like if you, I wouldn't have acquired a uniform unless you sort of like gave it to me and said like, here, wear this while we're on the ship. You're one of my officers now, whatever, like. I mean, I will say the beggar's cloak sounds like it falls underneath the dress code just right off the bat. That's okay. what I... <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, well, I don't know. You might run a pretty loose ship, right? Have you reviewed I mean, your employee uh, training right, handbook? Right. I mean, yeah. the word beggar, it's hard to get past it. You know, it's just, it's, that's a tough okay. one. Then I'll be wearing an Imperial Navy. Fair enough. There you go. Uniform. I'm prestige, you know, I, I took, I, I had to take prestige as a rogue trader, so. Uh, one thing I'll point out, uh, James, there is errata for the navigators. Oh, okay. Okay, but it's, it's, it's actually, it seems like it's all to your benefit. Uh, so what it says is that where the sentence that reads, unless otherwise noted a navigator power is a standard action should be changed to unless otherwise noted a navigator power is a half action. Oh, okay, cool. In Starship Combat, unless otherwise noted, a navigator may use one navigator power per strategic turn at the GM's discretion. Uh, you may use more than one power if they do not affect Starship Combat. And lid the stair is a full action. Uh, times and Tide is a free action. And there's a, I think that's it. That's all for... Oh, okay. And they changed um, for warp navigation. Uh, it uses the navigation warp test as opposed to perception test, which is listed there. Oh, and, that makes sense. Yeah, ditto for warp navigation at stage five leading through the warp. That's cool. Okay. All right. So how are we doing? No, I... Well, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to have to figure out because, uh, you know, there's all these navigator um, powers. Yes. But I'm trying to figure out how do you... Okay. But how, how do you, how do you, use you get them, future or... ones? No, how do you get future ones? Oh, uh, I'm not seeing... is it under your... Uh, I think the, like, psych the psychic, I believe, gets them as advancements? 
Let's see here. What do you have under? Uh, let me go back in Navigator. Navigator power, yeah. See, under rank two for Navigator advances. Oh, I can get a Navigator power, yeah. Yeah, for 200. And then I can get... Okay, so I can keep getting Navigator powers at two. You know, I must say that uh, whoever created the game, like the the, the spreadsheets behind <laughs> the, these things must have been truly impressive. Seriously. Because there's clearly a lot of thought put into like uh, when, you know, how you're going to sort of um, dole out power level over the course of the ranks. Yeah. For each of these. So the... So going from, you know, basic to adept, that just is taking another power. It doesn't scale up like some of the other skills where, you know, it goes no, you from 100 to 250. Yeah, it sounds like you need to stage. When you select uh, a navigator power, it either is a new one or you scale up one uh, step yeah, in so, your others. So it doesn't escalate going from novice to it's just a step. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So, and then I think like okay. at. Two. At each rank, you seem to be able to take one navigator power. Yep. That's cool. And there's eight. And then uh, there are also those advanced careers, too. I don't know if they're in the core book. Let's see here. Because you can also sort of like hyper specialize if you want to. That may you know, grant you more powers. We'll cross that bridge. I think the like minimum like rank three or four before you uh, need to worry about that. Okay. All right. Which uh, which powers did you end up going with? Or as your second one, did you scale up the, the second uh, one? Tricky, because <laughs> the gaze into the abyss looks quite fun. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Reveal the heretic. My gaze is good for taking down psychers. So I have one more item that I have no idea what it is. What's that? It's called a blessed ship token. Blessed ship token. Okay, let's see here. We'll be blessed, I believe, by the emperor, or perhaps a member of the ecclesiarchy. Well, la di da. Yeah. Well, I fucking stole that thing. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. I didn't see it anywhere in the items. I think it might be a charm. Uh, charms a keepsake, holy relic, good luck token that's intended to draw the benevolent eye of the emperor to the wearer. They have no tangible benefits. However, when the unfolding plot calls for something bad to happen to a random character, at the GM's discretion, a character with a charm will be exempt. If all characters carry charms, as all Emperor-fearing citizens should, then mm -hmm. it's up to the GM to choose which of the charms is most potent. Hmm. Mm. Okay, so it's a special charm that I carry around in hopes that it'll stop me from getting in fucking trouble. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I totally stole that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Did something bad befall the person you took it from? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'm totally imagining that they had this thing. Maybe they were the captain of a ship or something, or like the pilot of a you know a good ship, and mm -hmm. like I took over, and it's like, you know, I took their little blessed ship token with me. I am writing that down because okay. I probably never put that thing away. <laughs> I probably okay. have like worked it into my uniform. I like that a lot. Like it's it's um, <laughs> Call of Cthulhu has a similar mechanic with the luck stat, where like you make everyone makes a luck stat, and whoever fails, they're the one who something oh, yeah, bad yeah, happens yeah. to. It. I I really love that. Yeah. Right. And so when it's like saying like it's a blessed ship token, meaning like, right, it comes from a ship that indicates you were on that ship, and that ship itself was blessed by the emperor. 
Sounds or something right. along those lines. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. I like it. Okay. I think I've done everything except for the like finishing touches part. Okay. Where we go back to the yeah, and then we'll do we'll do all that stuff together as well because that's more of the um, linking everyone together. What you could do, Jeff, if you want to roll randomly, uh, unless you've got an oh you don't have a name yet, um, you can roll. Uh, you are from and there's examples of primitive, low, high, archaic, or informal names. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. yeah page uh, thirty one. Yeah. So I'll just roll the one d one hundred and then see which one. Mm -hmm. 1d100 oh. or wow so depending arthro or aubrey alessander esteban I, Alt. I mean my history is that i'm sort of from this primitive you know death world mm -hmm. So I might have a primitive name, but I may have kind of tried to make it a little fancier to, because I mean, I'm smart and I'm trying to blend in, yep. right? I was a, I'm a, you know. What are you thinking? Part of my thing there, because I was a oh. renegade, you know, and I have this enemy of the, whatever they're called again, those jerks, mm -hmm. the religious people. Historia. Where did I write that in? Did I not? Oh, I forgot to add that. Oh, I can't put the. Sorry, Matthew. I see you asking about the um, uh, the link. I actually can't post it in chat. I don't think I'm allowed to post. Hold on, let's try here. Oh, excuse me. No, I can't. Oh, I didn't add that. Oh. I have an enemy I forgot to add. I'm going to go back and do that. Let's see, what Maybe I... as a um, comment, Kevin, uh, uh, after you finish, I comment below the Oh, finished. yeah, yeah. It is under, like, the link to the Discord server is, it's under, if you go to the description of the video, under uh, join me on Twitter at, uh, there's a link that says join us on Discord at. That link will take you through to the Discord server. Oh no, I did add it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. Okay. So how are we doing for uh, Jeff? You're just getting your name to your character. Sean, looks like you've given your character a name already. Uh, same mm -hmm. thing with James. And uh, how are you guys doing for gear and for XP spends and stuff like that? Good. I'm um, I'm just pretty much on putting gear on there. Nice. And you got your rogue trader special ability. Yes. Excellent. That was so badass. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. I mean, so so like I mean, it's gonna be you know used constantly. Like it's gonna be you know, ridiculously so. It's gonna mm -hmm. be great. Ah, Alessander. Also nice. Okay. Probably a name that he took. Feel free to uh, uh, replace the uh, uh, illustrations too. I just put them as, as placeholders for it, uh, so you should be able to replace your illustration if you got an idea for what you want your token to look like. We're not going to be using maps all that much in this, but uh, we will use it to track things like your fate points and your uh, um, wound points. I'm gonna put days at the bottom here, maybe. Traits, traits. Where's traits? My traits is under talents uh, tab, I believe. Talents. Yep. Okay. Right. So then, one thing you can start considering then, Jeff, is on 32 is the nature and demeanor, and there's some other questions too. Well, you got me looking for a picture now. <laughs> okay. I like that I have it. I like that I have a Xeno pelt cloak. <laughs> that could be a wide variety of things, I suppose. <laughs> it's not necessarily like an Eldar. <laughs> that, just, that just comes with being a rogue trader. You get a pelt. Yeah. It's Xeno. Yeah. I do like that they did, uh, for the Coronas expense, there's a couple of, um, like, unique Xeno species they've introduced. Because mm. that, I mean, like, well, as much as there are going to be the, you know, the signature ones, the Eldar, the Orc, the whatever, um, it does give you some... Um, 
uh, some unique things as well too to add to that whole like exploring unknown space kind of quality. Nice. Oh, my print on demand books starting to come to bits. <laughs> oh, no, which one is that? The Rogue Trader? Yeah. Oh god. Yes. <laughs> that page suddenly came out. <laughs> We've, it's the corruption. The corruption of the warp. So Ooh. I've got now dark side trait. Let's add that. For those of us with best uh, craftsmanship armor, don't forget um, it's got a nice little buff. So uh, don't forget to. Uh, What's the buff from it? Uh, weighs half the normal amount and increases the AP by one. Oh, nice. Yeah. Easy to miss. The DM screen for this is really good. So just looking at the stuff on here. Oh yeah, weapon craftsmanship is on here. Nice. This is great stuff. NPC crew ratings are on here as well. That's great. Yep, so I can Love it. see in the dark. Good news. Oh, cool. Is that with your, um, what do you call My it? My black eyes. Oh, cool. Regius Benetech, that's your character's name? Yep. Cool. Benetech is a major family in the mm. in the sector. Yeah. Okay. And Quinelli Akeri? Yeah, is... I have no idea how to pronounce my last name yet. I'm working <laughs> on it. <laughs> I'll take your direction on that. Um, I have a question yep. on page 41. Okay. At the top, it gives a choice of armor. Yes. Uh, take a look. It looks like best craftsmanship enforcer light carapace or stormtrooper carapace. So does the best craftsmanship apply to both or just the enforcer? Mm. And it just implied that the stormtrooper. I think it's common. it's the light carapace at best craftsmanship. And I'll tell you why is because it says under monosword, best craftsmanship, monosword, or common craftsmanship power sword. Oh, you know, in which case that probably means best craftsmanship for either of those. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it must be for either because it didn't distinguish. Yeah, yeah, okay. I'll check the errata. Right on. It's this uh, print on the, you know, printed version is just fucking paying for itself already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see here. <clears throat> Yeah, it's cool. If, if um, yeah, I, I don't think the Living Errata is on drive through, uh, but if you you can find the PDF to download e from um, on the internet, even though it's not there, and they have it for this for Dark Heresy nice. for Death Watch, uh, and Death Watch one actually includes the um, Rights of Battle. I think it's called Rights of War, Rights of Battle um, source book, like the big source book for it. Cool. So yeah, it's it's quite helpful. That one makes up quite a few changes. I think you sent us the one for um, Rogue Trader. Mm-hmm. I got it somehow. Thank yeah, you. it's in the Discord server. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. There we go. Okay. That's what I was thinking. So, how are we doing here? Quinella, you're just finishing yours up. James, yeah, I mean, I'm ready for that uh, special acquisition thing whenever. Oh, uh, no, we got to do talk. background stuff first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, man's got his man or your mind on profit. So, that's, uh, that's probably good. <laughs> well, I'm on gear, so I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> deep into the gear subject. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, James, how is uh, your character coming together? I'm getting there. I decided not to do the littlest there, a second one, because that seemed a bit one-trick pony. Mm -hmm. so What'd you go with instead? I'm going gaze into the abyss. Nice. So I can figure out if something, if someone is not as um, 
holds the tame to the warp. Oh, cool. And I can also track powerful sick creatures using the rules on tracking as well. Mmm, very cool. And when I get better at it, it can be useful in space as well. Excellent. Oh, that's, yeah, that's going to be definitely... Um, I think that'll be helpful. Again, I, I do have the stats for Bloodthirster at a, at a you know, <laughs> right at hand here. <laughs> uh, James, uh, uh, or Jeff, a, a Bloodthirster is kind of like a Warhammer equivalent of a Balrog. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What's it called again? A Bloodthirster. It's a greater demon of, of corn. Mm. That's right. Make a blood for the blood god. Skulls for the skull yeah, throne. Yeah. Joke. Right. <laughs> My trouble is my psycho skills are so crap because of my um, perception and everything is so dire. But we think, will work on that. Yeah, and I think the, the fate points is one of the things that can help with that. Oh. Uh, to, oh, like because it's um, I think Spencer re-roll. And there's some other stuff you can do with it. Um, that's the way to sort of smooth over the you know either weak or like less than stellar stats to start with. Are those spent and then gone and then earned kind of thing? Or there's are those a difference. Like so you can spend them and you can burn them and you get different results from each. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So what, spent ones will come back? Spent ones start, yeah, at the start of each uh, session, you get your all your fate points back. So you're, oh, okay. you're expected to be spending them as you as you go along. Whereas uh, if you burn them, then they're completely gone. Yeah, I'll tell you how they work. Uh, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Because you get like a way more powerful effect to burn it. Exactly. It's That's the real like save your bacon stuff. And I believe right. it's 233. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Out, so it. spending one fate point allows re-roll of a failed test once, gain plus 10 to the test before you roll, gain an extra degree of success to the roll, count as having rolled 10 for initiative, instantly recover from being stunned, or instantly remove 1d5 damage. You can then burn fate... Uh, to, let's see here. Save your life. Uh, yeah, you can avoid getting killed. Yeah, I think that's it. This burn, burning is just to avoid getting killed. Mm -hmm. oh, you yeah. can burn a, a spent point. Yep. And you are awarded at my discretion. Hmm. Such rewards can be given out as main adventure reaches certain milestones or for particular acts of heroism, cunning, or good role playing. Cool. Hey, you resisted mutation. Pretty good. Okay. So are we ready to move on to yeah. the discussion? Of, uh, James, oh, yeah. how's your guide? You got all Stop. your gear and stuff? So I've done my gear and everything. What was this thing at about advancement roll? Sorry, what was that? Oh, you was got 500. Did you spend your 500 XP? Yep, spent those. Okay, perfect. Then uh, what we're going to do is next talk about the, let's see here, personalities of these Bet. folks. And then we're going to roll for your profit factor and your ship points. So we're giving characters life now. They have been dead thus far. We got names for everybody. That is good. Uh, James, we get a chance if you could change your display name as well too to your uh, All right. character yep. name because my memory is like a goldfish. Uh, so first thing is your nature is on page 32. It provides you the skeleton of your alter ego. However, those numbers and notes are not the sum of your total character. There is of course a vital fifth element, you. Background details of your character's life are largely up to you, uh, as uh, is, of course, their personality. Um, one of the first things to consider about your personality, what is it, what do you like? Uh, fiery or passionate or earthy and practical? Are you a perpetual pessimist or do you believe in the best, uh, the best will happen? Do you seek out people uh, or are you a misanthrope? I feel a little targeted there. Is there a middle ground <laughs> between me and the fucking... <laughs> Got plenty of like people in uh, small doses, but come on. Um, yeah. What is your instinctive response to threats, surprises, or pressure to perform? Here are some traits that might get you started. Bilious, cardinal, choleric, fixed, melancholic, mutable, phlegmatic, sanguine, or supine. 
any of you guys can feel free to jump in here. What are you thinking? What's your personality like for your character? Let's see. Jeff, you had the most time to consider yeah, this. You got an well, idea? So what I'm kind of imagining is he grew up on this, you know, death planet and, you know, everything's trying to kill you. And he sort of survived by his wits and his intelligence as much as anything else. And uh, then he got off the planet. You know, he sort of ended up, um, he was a free thinker. He got off the planet. There was some kind of calamity. Either the planet was destroyed or whatever they had to flee. Mm -hmm. He ended up in space, but he sort of realized that like space is the absolute opposite of where he grew up. Like, you know, everything's controlled, you know, sure. Everything's trying to kill you kind of, but in a much different way, like you're totally in control of your environment. If you have the, you know, the air system working and the, this work, you know, he was able to completely use his intelligence to sort of like take control of the, his world. And so he sort of like, became instantly in love with the, sort of the void of space and living aboard spacecraft. And so he became useful, like piloting, he, you know, he had a knack for all these things and he sort of like um, moved up through that. Then he ended up um, in this position of, like he said, I said, he stole this you know, ship token and sort of became like a, a Navy pilot overnight. And mm -hmm. so now he's ended up, we can get to the point of how he's on like, you know, Quinelli's ship, but um, I think along the way, you know, he he made an enemy. So somewhere along the way, he made this enemy of the uh, I can't remember their name. The Ecclesiarchy. Uh, Ecclesiarchy. Okay. And so um, that may very well he, be who you stole that from. And he's paranoid, and so uh, maybe yeah, like maybe I stole that directly from them. And so, and he's paranoid, so he's kind of like. Uh, Billis, you know, he's suspicious, but he's cautious. And mm -hmm. so I think that like a lot of people maybe see it as he's cautious because he's from this death planet. Oh, he's from a death planet. Like they're always, you know, nervous wrecks are always watching out. But I think it's more that he's actually like watching out for the ecclesiarchy or like being found out that he's sort of this like, you know, mm -hmm. chameleon who sort of moved into this position that Okay. Maybe he didn't earn the the normal way, but mm -hmm. he sort of like, you know, robed himself into the spot kind of thing. Yeah, and like to to give you a context for the road traders are not part of any kind of formal um like navy organization or anything like that. They are completely um, you know, things unto their own. Right. Uh, the, the subject of whatever the limits of the warrant are, uh, they're free to do whatever they want within the the scope of the what they can afford and what their ship is capable of and whatever. It's one of the few like meritocracies, uh, kind of uh, within uh, you know anywhere within the um, Imperium. Right. So maybe he feels very safe in his guise because we're out on the edges of you know no one's going to recognize that I'm not really an Imperial Navy. Well, pilot again, or you're not part of the Imperial. This is not part of the Imperial Navy. Right. So, but that's the outfit that I have. Uh, it, which it doesn't matter, like whether you're wearing an Imperial outfit or not, it, you're not part of the, this is not actually part of the Imperial Navy. Right. No, I understand that. But that's sort of the backstory he's using. Okay. So he said that he was part of the Imperial Navy before he came here. Right. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you understood that you're not like, right. there's no, not I a, understand this ship is not, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, right. We're not on a military ship. I understand that. But I'm saying Not that, even a military ship is a ship unto its own. There's no, right. this is not part of a larger fleet. This is not part of any other kind of, you know, larger organization. Right. No, I understand that. Okay. Um, it says a lot about where you grew up, that space seems safer as well. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. Like, I, obviously it's trying to kill you too, but like, it feels more controllable. Got it. Okay. What about uh, Quinelli or Regius? Any insight into their demeanors, guys? Uh, probably 75% sanguine, 25% choleric. Okay. So, and, and, you know, probably throwing a little something, something in there from some other ones of, um, but, but that, you know, that's the uh, broad strokes. So what's the impression, if you were to describe what his impression is? Uh, he is, um... 
young and prone to being a little dramatic as he tries to fill bigger boots, yep. you know, fills the shoes of his family, um, tries to please his father and look like the rogue trader, you know, act and fulfill some notion of the rogue trader he is. Um, it's not natural yet. Um, so he he tries to like fake it till you make it and so he's trying to like you know drinks on every you know drinks for the bar and this kind of a notion of like you know mm -hmm. um and and right up until someone um you know tries to get his uh tries to push a button and then he he will he is prone to overreact and okay. um and so you know, <laughs> i demand satisfaction like calm down <laughs> everyone calm down you know yeah. someone has to step in and go you need to take a oh deep the worst over here. he's these the nepotist uh, what's that the ne nepotistic hire <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 so what about uh regis i'm just trying to find the name of, i can't i've forgotten the guy's name now um so I've just jotted down that he is, if I can find the right icon, proud, arrogant, hedonist, hungry for new experiences, Xenos knowledge. He needs, deserves to know all. Mm. Uh, he's, I think he's a bit, if you remember in um, Xenos, uh, there's the uh, sort of noble that, uh, who was corrupted. Mm hmm I have this vision he's slightly along those lines. A guy who is so hungry for knowledge he might trip over the line. Love it. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so then, uh, going back to you, Jeffrey, why are you a leader aboard the Rogue Trader vessel? Um, I think it's sort of this combination of this uh, persona that he created as well as he really is a very skilled pilot. And so his, you know, he's been noticed probably by, uh, Quinelli, like, I need a great pilot for my vessel. Mm -hmm. And he's uh, recruited me to his crew. Okay. And what about uh, Quinelli? Why are you a leader aboard the Rogue Trader vessel? My family, obviously. My father. <laughs> nepotism. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I will not have the word nepotism mentioned on my craft. <laughs> However, I will are... mention my family three times this sentence. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> but, the, but the void door will be used promptly if I hear nepotism once by any of my crew. <laughs> uh, in fact, there's a picture I think of my, that I'm picturing as my father. Uh, it's in the book. Um, that's yeah. where I got the last name um hang on let's see where is it sure. Aqua. and while we're looking at uh regis oh. what about you why are you a leader aboard the rogue trader vessel well obviously i was always born to it <laughs> born to yeah oh, and maybe it's, it's born to be the lead it may speak nice. to the connections that uh, uh quinelli's family has to call in someone of such a distinguished lineage mm. Mm -hmm. I, I think we've had our, our, our background has been so similar in some ways. We feel there's a certain kindred spirit. I'm sure we must have had those times in hedonistic dens together. That um... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well, strangely, you almost need a guide more on a pleasure planet than you do a dangerous world. That's what I told you. <laughs> when the... Exactly. <laughs> so the Coronis Expanse region of the Halo Stars beyond the Calixus Sector is a place of dread rumor, death, and wealth beyond measure awaiting those brave enough to claim it. It is the rock upon which death dynasties of rogue traders have been dashed to death, and it's the spire that has brought others into the shining light of imperial glory. The Expanse is a realm of treasure, risk, secrets, and vile Xenos, fated to be scourged and claimed in the God Emperor's name, or so say the dissident Drusians. Why does the Coronis Expanse call to you? I'll let you guys all sort of discuss this because you're all sort of on the crew together. So it sounds like you've sailed, uh, as it were, together before coming here. Is that right? Or, um, Alessandro, do you think you've only joined uh, as uh, you know, w w uh, either since coming to or on the with the intention of sailing to the or flying. Yeah, maybe I was brought on to to bring take the ship out into these sort of dangerous places. I, I see Alessandra as someone who's like lived on this razor blade of death his whole life. So 
heading out into a part of space that's, you know, death at every corner just seems normal. But I also think that, like, um, the way you guys describe yourselves, um, I see if we find a lot of riches, um, the riches aren't as important to either of your characters. And so maybe Alessandra sees an opportunity to like t take a good share of, you know, riches that we find or whatever to like, you know, move his up his station in life from sort of this, you know, hobo to like, maybe he can live a life like you guys probably, or especially Quinelli aspires to retire to back to the, you know, pleasure planet or whatever. I mean, that first time I saw you in that beggar's cloak. Oh my yeah. goodness! Like, you know, <laughs> exactly, like this poor kid, right? <laughs> okay, the uniform in your suitcase. How about you put that on? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna need to wear that on my ship. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What I about? Like I mean, it. it sounds like um, uh, Canelli and uh, Regius have traveled together beforehand. What brought you to the Cronus Expanse? What called oh, to I you? Oh, I think we've got in the last line. Perhaps you chat. You chase a dark trail of secrets and forbidden lore. Mm. I think that's mm. me. Well, yeah. aren't you also really interested in the Xenos? Yep. Yeah. Which is uh, forbidden so... as well. Right. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. The Xenos knowledge is forbidden knowledge, right? Yeah. 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 I'm and looking it... for new pleasures, which are beyond human. <laughs> let's let's go nowhere near the Dark Eldar, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and then uh, uh, what about uh, Captain uh, Kennelly? Um, I mean, it's my destiny. I mean, it's my future. It's my family. It's my yeah. dynasty. It's my, it's my galaxy. Okay. So the next, <laughs> all too many people shy from their final victory, scared at, uh, scared by what it will cost to achieve their dreams. How deep are the wounds you were willing to suffer on the path to wealth, fame, revenge, or forbidden lore? How far will you go, and how many of your dearly held beliefs will die along the way? Are you willing to sacrifice health, limbs, or your very sanity if your quest requires it? Will you use your crew, your allies, or even your companions as mere stepping stones, trading their lives for advantage? as the game comes to a close and victory beckons. Are you willing to step from the path of the faithful and strike deals with Xenos, Viles, Psykers, and darker powers to attain your ends at the cost of your immortal soul? And this is all directed towards Regis. These are choices, uh, these choices are yours. What are you willing to sacrifice for victory? And how will you live with the consequences? I like to think of it's more about who will you sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> Regis has just written a giant yes in red across this whole thing. <laughs> what about uh, Alessandra or Captain Kennelly? I mean, I'd like um, to keep my wits about me and my physical capability of enjoying my retirement. But other than that, like as far as my morals or my, you know, those things go, hey, I'm a free thinker, man. Whatever it takes. If we gotta befriend some strange Xenos or, you know, steal somebody's stuff, that's no big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there's been a question of uh, Quinelli's commitment, whether he's, um, cause he was having a pretty good time. And, um, you know, growing up as a rogue trader scion is, uh, is no rough, is no rough walk and um so but once you get kicked out of the cradle and you're gonna you're supposed to go off and um you know do some of that rogue trader stuff for the family and make your name and make us all proud you know that can get you may or may not come back and um and that kind of thing um and he, he i think quinelli um though he wouldn't admit it to anyone probably um he worry he's a little bit he's not sure he hasn't proven himself and he knows that and he's had a pretty soft life um, mm. I mean, uh, you know, he's pretty tough for, as, you know, according to your average citizen, but I mean, as far as going out and doing what his father did, that's a whole nother, whole nother level. And so when it comes to it, um, you know, it, it, in his, uh, he does, he does hope that he comes back. Like, you nice. know, he's, he's not sure, like yeah. he's not sure, you know, how this goes. Like he hasn't done this yet. He hasn't mm. gone out, risked things and then come back and talk about it. So he's really not, he just hopes 
Am I right in thinking then that he doesn't have an answer to what he would sacrifice because he's never been asked to do so before? Yeah, he's not sure. I mean, he knows what's being asked of him. Okay. Um, you know, the family makes that clear. Okay. Uh, but um, what he's what what will happen in the uh, in the moment of truth is still uh, is still out there. Okay. Next is your ambition. Ambition drives rogue traders and their allies. The raw urge for power, for wealth, or to serve the god emperor of mankind in ways that will echo down through the ages. What is your ambition? Perhaps it's to drive your sword into the map of stars and see your name writ there next to worlds claimed in the emperor's name. Perhaps you desire renown to match the imperial heroes of legend. Or perhaps you wish to reclaim all the lost human souls of the Halo Stars and become a high ecclesiarch of a new imperial realm. Maybe your ambitions are less lofty, but no less noble. To be acknowledged a master of war by an imperial lord general. To regain your lost faith in the imperial creed through some grand act of penitence. Or to discover lost Medicaid tech that will erase your mutations. Ambition is as varied as humanity, and you are defined by what drives you to great acts. What are your ambitions? Well, I can go first because mine's really simple. Sure. <laughs> Wealth. Ever mm. since Quinelli told me about his home world and the, diff the, the vast difference between what life is like there compared to what my childhood was like. I just want to be rich enough to go live somewhere like that and live the good <laughs> life, you know, like yep. get out of this, stop living on the razor blade, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Quinelli wants to, I mean, among other things, he has, in, he has this vision of himself, um, looking over like a, like a, a vista, and uh, and declaring and you know probably with corpses around him and declaring I claim this world in the name of the Emperor of Man and his Imperium. I bring justice and truth for the loyal, punishment and death for the guilty, and the spoils I take by my own hand. And so this is like a famous quote. This is like on on the wall of a of a great manse of his family, mm -hmm. and his father issued these exact words. And it has that quote that he's been seeing his entire life. Um, with his, you know, obviously his fa his father's portrait in, uh, above it. So yep. he wants to, he has this vision like, this is my, my destiny, mm, my calling. Nice, okay. So he is untempered steel at this point, or at least untested steel, it sounds Indeed. like. So that's, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What about uh, mm -hmm. Regis? What is his ambition? Pleasure and knowledge. Forbidden knowledge. Nice. <laughs> See previous the more answer. Forbidden, the better. <laughs> yeah. Now, Regis, right. is that forbidden knowledge valuable? Well, <laughs> that's all I need to know. All right, so your final thing: the burning flame of hatred is an imperial virtue. It sustains men against terror, xenos, rivalry, and defeat, even when it burns cold and slow. What hatred sustains you in the dark days and drive you to act uh, acts of destruction or penitence? Do you loathe the mutant or the pirate who prays to dark gods? Do you wish a fiery doom upon decadent nobles or desire to murder the low-born scum of your vessel with death gas? Do you wish to lay low the vile orc or the treacherous Eldar? Have the inhabitants of a specific imperial world, a renowned ministerium cult, or perhaps a rival rogue trader's crew earned your lasting wrath? Maybe you simply cannot stand to be shown wrong, or be in the presence of those who speak falsely, or to be seen to fail at certain tasks. Quinelli, I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys think? What are your hatreds? I think that Alessander hates chaos, mm. sort of like what he sees, you know, as like the faults of his home world, you know. The, the... So I should say chaos with a capital C has a very specific meaning in this setting. Oh, it does. Okay. Oh, yeah. Chaos is the, the ruinous powers. 
Remember in our Warhammer game, the four gods of corruption and evil and whatnot in that? Yeah. Uh, Nurgle, okay. Korn, Zeech, and Slanish. Those are the same thing in this setting. They are- 30,000 oh. years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, oh. So okay, that's what it's okay, so just, just if by using chaos in any Warhammer game has a very specific sort of connotation to it. I understand what you mean, though, like disorder and and uh, lack right. of organization. Right. Like, yeah. you know, death through <laughs> living on the planet. Like, you know, it's like sort yeah. of he sees the order of the Imperium and some of these planets, you know, that they've conquered these Imperial planets or the hive ones and just sees the. Uh, a life that he is more attracted to. I mean, a spaceship is sort of like the epitome of organization moving through space, right? Yep. Like, you know, everything in its right place, or at least that's the way that he sees the ship. Okay. What about uh, Captain Quinelli or Regis? A Regis isn't the tests, the narrow-minded, the people who can't have ambition to see beyond their own narrow focus. Mm, okay. Does that the relate to his people. family at all? Because uh, they have seen a great deal of success, but I'll bet you it's within the, even though it's, it's you know, a notable and, and successful house, it is within a fairly regimented uh, regime, right? You, you need to walk the... Yeah, but I, th I think it'll be with individuals. I'm sure there are other individuals in the family that share similar, okay. or have shared, but there are other members of the family, I can imagine, who are too stuffy, too narrow-minded, too compliant. Mm -hmm. They achieve the same Happy position that they're... with the order. Yeah, the same uh, positions that their forefathers had, however lofty they may be, they're just trading off the same spot as opposed to making their own mark. Okay. And so. uh, what about Captain Quinelli? <clears throat> what is his um, hatred? I think he has... <laughs> Dance he music. Be... He hates that. <laughs> <laughs> his father's favorite songs that he played over and over and over again upstairs. <laughs> um, so he... Uh, he... Because he views most of what the... Of what the... Imperium hates as opportunity. Like he doesn't really hate. I mean, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't love those things, but he. But he doesn't really hate them. He views opportunity. So I think he hates. I think he hates being doubted. Um, he hates. Um, he, he particularly hates those who cast aspersions on his family. Okay. Um, and and that and that pose a specifically that pose a legitimate threat. In fact, I think that um, that. Uh, that probably like that that rogue trader that rogue trader rivals that take things too seriously like um he he respects competition but when they're trying to wipe out families i think he hates that like um, there's no call for that you know it's below it's um mm. it, it's uh it's self-destructive, it's so, sabotaging. Like he expects a certain level of uh, professionalism from other rogue traders is, or professional yeah, courtesy? Yeah, I mean, I mean certainly, certainly they're trying to get one up. I mean, again, competition is fine, and um, and even to the point of embarrassing you is fine. Um, that's all in, you know, someone grabs a plan before you do. Yeah. But as far as like targeting you and ambushing families and wiping them out kind of a thing, um, you know, some kind of a, mm -hmm. of a, uh, of a, um, can't think of the word I'm trying to think of, but yeah, just just wiping out families he thinks is way over the top, and okay. you know that exists, I'm pretty sure. And so you know he's seen, he's heard of it, or seen it, or heard his family, his father talk about it, and he, you know, he he fears his his family being destroyed, you know, and and so that's um that 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 he would definitely hate that. Okay. Uh, so then our final thing we need to do uh, tonight. Let me take a look here. If it's on each of your character sheets, or we need to put it elsewhere. Um, Isn't there two things? Fate. Oh, go ahead. Yep. Yeah. Like, do we have to do this starting profit thing? Uh, yeah, you're going to roll your profit factor and ship points, and then you have your last. What I was going to suggest is uh, that we take the two weeks between now and the first session for you to take a look through the gear before you make your roll. Ooh. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, just because yeah, sure. I mean, like, yes. I want you to have—I don't want you have to make the decision in the next like nine minutes for yeah. for what thing. It'll give you an opportunity to take a look through. That'll also give you a sense of what the risk will be with it. Because your profit okay, factor, yeah, and maybe you can explain that then, real so quick. So profit but... factor is your starting uh, percentage. Uh, that is just a flat percentage of what you got for uh, acquiring something. 
Uh, then we take a look at the acquisition modifiers listed right here. And these will affect the chances of success. It's the scale, the, what are the four factors? Scale, rarity, and I can't remember what the other one is. Quality. Oh, and quality. Or craftsmanship, yeah. sorry. Yeah. So there you go. Um, so that way you'll have a chance to take a look, you know, and, and pick something particularly cool uh, and then make your roll for it. Um, who, since Sean is playing the rogue trader, I'm thinking he might be the one role in the 1d10. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think so. Yep. It's his ship in the end. Yep. But I just want to note, I seem to be able to buy a division of troops. <laughs> For what good it'll do you, yes. You guys can. On average, you, you should be able to call on 1 20th of your crew as armsmen. So, like, you should be able to outfit for a ship of, like, 50,000, like, 2,500 armsmen. All right. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so. But we're not going to send them. <laughs> we're going to send us. Yeah. On that little <laughs> commander on Why that little rowboat again. Why send 5,000 heavily armed troops right, when right. five, <laughs> five PCs can fail? Five of the best. Five of the best. <laughs> All right, so yeah. go ahead and, uh, Sean, when you are ready, give us a 1d10 roll. All right. Big money. Okay, holding on to your butts. Here we go. One. Oh, 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 the worst. <laughs> oh. Okay, so, but here, no, here's what it means, though, is it's actually, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, oh, right, the because profit it's profit factor versus ship is a points, 60, yeah. but the ship points you get are only 30. So Take although the dynasty up. does not command a powerful starship, it possesses great resources. So I think maybe the way to think of this is that you have been underwritten by your family with a lot of money to not take away from what you've developed about your character's backstory, mm -hmm. but you don't have a very impressive ship. Mm. You know, you got uh, deep mm -hmm. pockets to try and get this thing going. Um, as example, oh yeah, there's a sample ship, but it's got a sample ship of 50. Um, I will what page? Uh, I'm on page uh, 211. or something? There's an example rogue uh, trader vessel. We can, what I'm gonna suggest is we do the building of the uh, ship in Discord. Okay. okay. You yeah. know, and then they do that. And I think what I might ask you guys to do is to give, so Dave can, uh, he was thinking about making the, what do you call it, uh, making the selections, um, on like sending me the selections uh, for his character and then going through. I'm going to see if I can get him in for a couple of hours to make a character, uh, like a do the full character generation system. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll, I'll have insight. If you guys get, tell him maybe a little bit about your character in uh, Discord, just so he's got an idea of who everyone else is. And I'll try and connect the characters as we make his character, but... Yeah, it's possible too that that's um that's the ship my father, you know, decided to give me. Like you know, he he doesn't want to he doesn't want me going out like I've all I'm all that. Like oh, know, and that's what I'm thinking. To. Yeah, so ship points if you got thirty, the baseline there's a Hazaroth class privateer on there that has twenty two thousand crew, and it's a it's ship points thirty. But I think that's without any weaponry. And I imagine you want to get weapon guns on your thing. So a Vagabond class merchant trader or a Jericho class pilgrim vessel. Now, Quidilly, Regius would like to point out that he appears to have been de deprived of his Lunar class cruiser <laughs> by that role. <laughs> With his 95,000 crew. So it's your 20, uh, yeah, this, this is going to be a pretty bare bones vessel. <laughs> For, well, we'll take a look at it afterwards. We don't really have time to do that today, but, but we'll use, um, uh, what do you call it? We'll use uh, Discord to, to help put together your ship and then also select a name for your ship, which we'll reveal at the start of next session. Okay. Um, but yeah, it is definitely you're going to have a lot of money behind you, but you will have, I guess the upside is, is the chance of you guys starting with a very badass uh, piece of gear have gone up substantially because 60% is the starting chance there, your profit factor. Now, uh, do you list that under your profit factor? Is that under your uh, journal or what? Hmm. 
the sh yeah, because there is a ship tab, and I got a whole uh, separate character sheet for that. Oh, good point. But I'll bet you it's under journal instead. Um, lineage, motivation, no. Ship points, obviously, is under ship name. I mean, that's there, yeah. but let's see. Yeah, ship points is definitely under uh, the ship name, but your profit hmm. factor, where does that go in here? Hmm. I don't see. I don't see it under the ship. Agreed. Uh, I don't see it under your stats or your quick skills or anything like that. Or journal. Yeah, it's not under journal either. Not under combat. I'm assuming you're not fighting your way. I'm gonna fight my way, Rich. Right. Although I guess that's like every mercenary. Uh, you're not under fatigue. Hmm. I wonder. Maybe just in our journal somewhere. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Uh, huh, I don't know why that's not uh, on anywhere. Maybe it is somewhere we're just not seeing it right now. Under psychic powers, uh, it's not under experience or advancements uh, or insanity. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it is. That's weird. Yeah. Well, we'll keep it on the ship. Uh, table. Okay. So, the example, like just for an example, just so I understand this when I'm thinking about what I want to go for. Power armor is very rare. Yes. So you take the sixty, and then you look at this chart, and it says very rare is minus twenty. So then it would be forty. So I'd have a forty percent chance of getting that. Correct. So I rolled one d one hundred. If it's under forty, I have power armor. Correct. And we each cool. do that. Yeah, you we each get one chance. Each get that. one yeah. chance at one piece of gear, and then uh, you you will have a chance to try and acquire that stuff. Uh, I can't remember the circumstances that that need to be for you making a new acquisition roll, but like you do get a chance to do that. And over the course of your adventures, your um, profit factor will go up and down depending on the different things you do. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like your endeavors, well, yep. that's where you're trying to manage that, that stuff. And I, I think you might be able to spend, why well, not might be, able, I imagine you'd be able to spend profit factor to try and upgrade your ship over time as well. It seems worth going for some kind of a role like I just described as opposed to like a, a small upgrade. For, oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point because I was thinking of going for, um, I was a thinking cool of going, weapon. I was like, I mean, I get I get access to pretty decent weapons as it is. That was definitely a temptation, but um, possibly, yeah, possibly a bolter, maybe. Um, but that armor, because I was thinking of goggles, like a night sight goggles. But when you think about power armor, you know, night goggles versus power armor. I don't know. The power armor sounds pretty sweet. I mean, that's pretty uh, tough to not try for. Right, get, like you get a forty percent chance. Like I mean, it's 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 not a it's doable. Mm -hmm. It is doable. That's a big. That's a big thing. Yeah, uh, I mean, power, power armor is pretty... extremely rare. Not not rare though. Oh, maybe they upgraded that because on the sheet I have it says very rare. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like in the PDF. So oh. in the book they that must be a. Uh, uh, in the print version, it's yeah, it's listed as extremely rare. So maybe they change it. To rare instead. So then you'd have a 30% chance. To the errata. Let's see here. Yeah, that must have been errata. Because mm. you'd think yep. that would Availability be... for. Uh, oh, no. Uh, availability for light power armor and power armor. And that should be changed to extremely rare. I must have a second uh, yeah. printing. Uh, one that of makes these at sense. least. That's cool. Interesting. Yeah, I mean that makes perfect cool. sense to me. I'm not. I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. So we might have to, like, yeah. If we're gonna, well, it's do still this a thirty percent chance, which is not nothing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Now I will say though, my, um, I mean, I have carapace, carapace as it is. Mm -hmm. It's not that far off. It's not. Um, it's not crazy far off. Mm -hmm. Like it's. Uh, there's a difference. I'm seeing. There's a difference between. Um, human power armor, and um, I'm reminded in seeing that there's a difference between human power armor and um, space marine power armor, which is uh, a whole nother level of power armor. They're not all the same. Yeah. So this this, this power armor, I mean, I presumably without reading it, comes with um, like strength benefits. I'm gonna guess, but but besides you know that, do, the guys, actual. Uh, mm -hmm. I will load. Um... Because we're going to make use of some of the rules out of here anyway, I will load the PDF of the 
uh, into the storm, into the game as well, which is the like, it's like the expansion book. Okay. Um, Cause it has extended armory. Uh, it has uh, starships mm. expanded. It has vehicles in it. It has new navigator powers and astropath powers. And then most importantly, it has the social interaction challenges, rules, and some of the other, um, like there's a, a thing called a meta endeavor, which is not really like, it's, it's a way of structuring within the endeavor mechanics, something that is not quite clearly like just go to X and do Y. Um, to give you some extra uh, stuff in there, some extra ideas for what you could uh, spend it on. Nice. You know, because, um, you know, having a, there's a, a new gear is on there, new drugs, new tools, the exotic and alien. I can't imagine who that might appeal to. Right. I know that uh, Regius is really I uh, itching for the orc armory uh, to uh, <laughs> get hold of shit that won't work for any of anyone other than an orc. Um, but that's great. So we're, we'll figure out what the name of the ship is and the, and the particulars of the ship between now and next session. Um, but okay. that's, I think, uh, it for character generation, guys. So congratulations nice. on sweet, making yeah. your first explorers. Pretty sweet. Yeah, very cool. I'll let you load an, yeah, an image in between now and next session as well, too. Oh, yeah. Uh, that'll give you a chance yeah. to find some stuff. And if you, if you see a picture in the Rogue Trader book that you like or, like, part of one that you want cropped, <laughs> I can get that from the PDF. So if there cool. is something, just send me a page reference of what you want, and I'll or from this or any other source, I can get the um, get it out of the PDFs with Photoshop. So cool. then, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for session zero of our new a Rogue Trader campaign, The Frozen Reaches. Um, as is always the case, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns regarding the session, the campaign, or the game we're playing, please don't hesitate to uh, leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll endeavor to reply in a timely fashion. I will also include a link, or I'll post a comment on this one with a link to the Discord server. Matthew, if you haven't had a chance to find that yet, I will put that on there just so it's, it's easy. Uh, there's an ease of reference, and you can find uh, easily if you've had difficulty finding it in the description. Thank you again, Matthew, for your generosity for donations for the session as well, too. That was very much appreciated. We're, we'll be investing that in some uh, stuff for our uh, our stalwart explorers here, I think. Um, in addition, there's a link down below to our friends at Noble Knight Games. Noble Knight Games is the preeminent retailer of hard-to-find and out-of-print RPGs in uh, North America. They have a terrific selection of uh, hard-to-find and out-of-print games, as well as a um, terrific uh, wishlist feature or wantless feature for uh, game uh, items that are uh, in their stock or listed in their stock but not in stock right now. What they will do is send you an email. If you put it on a want list, they will send you an email when it comes in. They also have a full selection of new RPGs, new board games and new tabletop or new um, card games uh, but I particularly love them for this I actually filled a lot of my Rogue Trader collection uh, thanks to uh, Noble Knight Games and uh, right now for the last I believe it's the last week right now they're in the last bit of their 25th anniversary uh, sale where they have 25% off I believe it's like 95% of their stock so you can find a lot of deals over there Outside of this uh, sale, if you enter the code MUSINGS at checkout, you will save yourself 10% on your purchase. Uh, or any purchase, $10 or more. Um, in addition, there is a link down below to the Heroes Save Villages campaign, which is the charity fundraising campaign we run on the channel. It benefits the SOS Children's Villages International Charity, a really terrific organization active in over 130 countries, benefiting over 80,000 orphan and abandoned children, including uh, ongoing relief efforts in Ukraine and the surrounding countries at the time of recording. Um, all money that is donated through that link goes directly to SOS Children's Villages International. None of it goes to the channel or any other middleman. It just goes to help out the kids who benefit from their services. And as a small way of saying thank you, uh, we have two ways of uh, saying thank you, actually. One of them, for every $25 Canadian that you donate through that link, you get one chance to win the grand prize or one of the other great prizes in our next charity raffle. Uh, if you want to see what was awarded in the last charity raffle, head on over to the Dungeon Musings Discord server and uh, go to the Charity Initiatives channel where we have uh, a list of of all the prizes that were awarded last time. Our next draw will be in December 2022. And um, there is also um, a as another way of saying thank you. Uh, for those who have donated since June of 2020, June 15 of 2022, uh, you also will be able to vote on our next charity session. Our next charity session will be with a channel favorite, Modifius Entertainment's outstanding Conan Adventures in an Age Undreamed of. And uh, that'll be at the end of uh, November. 
and uh, the donors will help us decide what kind of story where it's going to be, where it's going to be located, and a bunch of other factors. So uh, in addition to uh, getting a chance to win some cool gaming stuff, you also will get a chance to uh, shape what game is uh, played at the charity session, or the next charity session at least. The last thing I will say is an enormous thank you to Jeffrey, Sean, and especially James, who's at an ungodly hour right now. Thank you so much for joining uh, me today, guys. This was a shit ton of fun. I can't believe how fast four hours blew, uh, flew by. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Very good. Awesome. Then we will be back to play our first session of the Frozen Reaches, or at least this campaign in two weeks time until then we hope that we gave you a few hours to take your mind off the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our explorers will be encountering in the corona expanse in a, a short few weeks and until then stay safe stay healthy and happy gaming <laughs>